Good evening, everybody. It is I, not Corey, but Kyle Spence tonight. Uh, Corey is on the road back to his location away from home to join us for the show, but he will be just a couple minutes late. So I will be starting things out uh, talking Iowa women's basketball and their NCAA bracket draw for 2024. Um, uh, anticipating very excited about after the great season hopeful for one seed which they did get but many many difficult games that they're to get back to the NCAA uh, women's basketball championship game the way they did last year um, so very very uh, very very interesting we'll talk the teams that will be playing in Iowa City um, as well as the other teams in the region and Iowa's hopes to go back to the championship game Pleased to be joined by none other than Kashin Alexander. How are we doing, Cash? Hi, guys. I know it's not the uh, I, I know it's not the normal arrangement, but hopefully you're not too disappointed. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> we will we will have some fun. We got Corey joining us here in about 15 minutes. Um, but just to cover, in case people did miss the selection show tonight, Iowa did secure a one seed in the Albany Second Region. Um, in Iowa City, they will play the first two games as they do every year in the women's tournament. Um, they will play the winner of Holy Cross and UT Martin in round one, followed by, if they can get through that, the winner of West Virginia and Princeton in round two. And then after that, we will see it will. We've got Kansas State, we've got Colorado, we've got LSU, we've got UCLA, we got plenty of teams uh, that could could present a lot of different matchups um, that would be. Really, really interesting down the road. Just your thoughts, Kashin. Uh, first reaction to this bracket. Holy hell. <laughs> that was my first reaction, too. Um, don't get me wrong. I, I've already kind of pegged this NCAA tournament to be probably the best one we've seen. Um, just because of the amount of talent that many different teams have. Just the projection of women's basketball in general. But, woo. If there was ever a time where they thought that Caitlin Clark was going to have a smooth sailing, they put a nail in that coffin immediately. Um, <laughs> I am very excited. Um, I'm very happy that we either have to play one or the other. 
as far as UCLA or LSU <laughs> and not that they're like, we got to play both of them on our way. Um, I don't like that. I think Iowa Princeton is going to be a hell of a matchup. Um, I think that's going to be a high scoring contest. I think that um, they run the floor well as well. So I, I think that is going to be a fun um, second game um, for us. I am not versed in Holy Cross and UT Martin. I know UT Martin is very well coached. Um, I don't know much about Holy Cross, but I'm going to get familiar um, <laughs> for, yeah. for that reason of being. I, I'm, not, I'm not as worried, should I say, about that, only because it's at home. It's Caitlin's last hurrah. I'm not super nervous about that. I would be more nervous about the second one than I would be the first one. Um yeah. Colorado Drake should be very interesting. Drake, I mean, Colorado has not been playing well as of late. Yeah. So I think that could be a very interesting matchup as well. Um, I think Kansas State will take care of Portland. Not not counting them out, of course. Um, but the fact that K-State is like, are we serious? Four? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, it is what it is. But, um, uh, those are two teams that are going to be very, very familiar, Kansas State and Iowa. <laughs> that's crazy. Like you Third couldn't have put them in another rocket. I know. Like, that's wild. Um, yeah. Louisville versus LSU, I can't wait. I can tell you that right now. Just because of the back and forthness that they have in general. Um, you think uh, you think those LSU or the uh, Louisville defenders will get, get up in Haley Van Liss' face? What? <laughs> They know her better than anybody. <laughs> you think they might uh, be looking forward to that matchup? <laughs> I They're they going to be – I can't wait. I, I, that's just going to be fun. Don't, But don't take Rice out of the picture now. They came on a hot streak, so you yeah. never really know with that. And I will say this, Middle Tennessee has always been great. So yeah. that could be an early upset with Louisville. Yeah. Well, Someone you think about I a lot of these, from. like – with a lot of these teams, like with Rice and Middle Tennessee State and um, Princeton too as well. Like these teams yeah. are not used to losing. Like Princeton's won 25 games already this year. Like they, they are not accustomed to going into gyms and coming out losers. Like they, they go in and, and they expect to win every game they play, no matter who it's against. So exactly. Very, very so that that I mean that could be an upset right there. Middle Tennessee and Louisville. That definitely could be an upset. UNLV yeah. and Creighton is going to be a, a good game as well because UNLV is a pretty good team as well. Um, yeah. Our Honestly speaking, I think the only person who has like an easy first round, when I say easy, I mean like I'm 100% sure they're going to win, <laughs> is UCLA. Um, and I'll take Iowa for that because we're home. But UCLA and LSU have a tough, <laughs> a tough um, kind of road there. Obviously, we do too, but that bottom half is – I want we on. I don't want to be on the bottom half. That's crazy. Um, and did you survive the gauntlet too? By the way, so Iowa gets uh, potentially Princeton in the second round, and then Kansas State potentially LSU or UCLA. Survive all that, and you get to play Juju Watkins, right? <laughs> in the final four, Where's followed that? by South Carolina in the championship game potentially. So, lots Where of uh, lots of really really good matchups. So, just want to run through. A, I'm going to run through a little bit. I. Corey gave me a little bit of late notice for tonight, but I did put together uh, some quick information on some of these teams. Um, so we'll cover um, some of them uh, as we get ready for the games in Iowa City. As Corey joins us, we'll talk more sort of big picture and what's down the road. So West Virginia was 24-7 and this year. They finished fourth in the Big 12. They lost in the quarterfinals of the conference tournament. Uh, really the most interesting wins they had were the 21-point win over Penn State. Four-point win over Oklahoma. Um, they started their season, I believe, 12-0. and 0, um, Suffered back-to-back double-digit losses to Texas and Iowa State um, and kind of were pretty average from that point on. Um, leading scorer, J.J. Quinterly, averages 20 points a game. Um, and for Princeton, like I said, 25 wins on the season, 25-4. and four. They won the Ivy League regular season and tournament champs won the regular season kind of going away. Uh, they got two Leading scorers, Caitlin Chen at just under 16 points a game. Madison St. Rose at just under 15 points a game. 
Um, UT Martin was interesting. They were 16 and 16 um, on the season. They finished second in the Ohio Valley. They lost their first six games of the year, um, but they did win their conference tournament to get to uh, the tournament. The only two um, major programs that they played on the year were they lost to Marquette in their opening game by 33. And in the second game of the year, they lost to Vanderbilt by two. Um, and 11 and seven in conference play was enough with tiebreakers to take second in the conference, but then they went on to win their conference tournament after that. So, um, Holy Cross went 20 and 12 and finished first in the Patriot league and won their conference tournament. Uh, they lost to Boston college by five and lost to Villanova by 10. Those were their only two sort of important games. So, um, yeah, these are going to be these are going to be really interesting games. I'm not like like you said, I'm not worried about the the opening round game, but that Princeton game, I think that could be a game where we see a final score with both teams in the high high 80s, low 90s or higher. That that could be a that that game could turn into a track meet really really quickly. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, it, it, I know when we look at our region as in a whole, right? We say, oh my god, this is this is crazy. But if I had to choose from the top to the bottom, I'm choosing the top. <laughs> Cause yeah. that bottom is nuts. Um, yeah. And, you know, I don't really know how, you know, it ended up the way it is, but every year there's always some kind of confusion with the, with the, the bracket choices. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that, that bottom half, I think every team that's in that bottom half has to be thinking like, really? <laughs> Um, but overall, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I think that not what I expected, (laughs) but now that we're here, I'm just excited for what, you know, is coming our way and thank the Lord we have home court advantage the first two games, um, and that our Hawk fans travel well. So hopefully no matter where we go, we're going to have home court advantage, quote unquote, so, but yeah, um, it's going to be interesting. I was kind of shocked with the whole Stanford uh, thing. I wasn't, I don't know. I guess it makes sense when you think about it with Texas being um, the th- that fourth number one seed. Um, yeah. yeah. But nonetheless, I'll take it. I don't know who would have the tough, what other um, bracket or I guess region do you think has the next toughest? Um. Well, uh, the mm-hmm. only other matchup that I thought as a Big Ten fan would be interesting is Indiana gets South Carolina in the Sweet 16. Um, I think that could be interesting. And then um, Nebraska has Oregon State in the second round, and then they would play Notre Dame. So I, th- I think that bracket's fairly difficult. Um, I think the third region is probably – well, I don't know. Virginia Tech's a tough four seed in the, in the, uh, in the third region, but – I, don't, I, I think that's that's Kitley. probably the weakest, but they don't have Kitley, so that's an issue. Oh, they don't. Okay, yeah, there you go. Well, they've got no. uh, USC has uh, they USC would have Kansas or Michigan in the second round, um, and then likely Virginia Tech in the Sweet Sixteen. So neither without uh, Kitley, that's probably a, that's probably two wins for them, and then um, they would have the winner of Ohio State UConn in the Elite Eight. So. Tennessee has a chance to make it all the way for um make it pretty far um uh, with the bracket there. Yeah. Um I don't I mean I could be wrong, but I don't think that that Texas bracket is very <laughs> stacked. No. Uh-uh. So it is what it is at that point. Um Oh, there's a lot of people in there that, but Tennessee, in my mindset, could go pretty far. Um, and then obviously you just got Stanford; they can go pretty far as well. So it should be interesting because Tennessee is going to have to play Stanford to get out of there. Um, but Texas has like nobody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that sounds know. horrible, um, but Alabama, Florida State in the second round, and then probably Gonzaga, Utah in the Sweet Sixteen, and then. Probably That's Stanford nice. after that, but like, nice. yeah, they don't. And then they would, but that now I guess they would have to. Is te- so tech? Yeah, Texas would get South Carolina in the final four. So that would be that's their, that's their, uh, that's going to be their real test if they can make it through everything else. But um, 
yeah, no, I like I said, if Iowa and USC can make it through their regions, I think that that game will be that that yeah. that game will kind of I mean, be I like, like our uh, matchup though with with USC over yeah. the other ones on the other side. <laughs> yeah, so I'm oh, happy yeah. no, about I'd that. I'd rather I'd rather have I'd rather have them than South Carolina. That's for sure. Yeah. I think too, in a in a sense too, like uh, you. I know it's it's kind of a it's kind of a different. Uh, I know it's totally different being in the NFL and you can, you know, have players play 20 years instead of just four, but it feels like that game could be a passing of the guard game was Caitlin leaves college and Juju kind of comes into her own as a college player, almost kind of like some of those old Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, mm-hmm. AFC championship games, or any of those, any games where you can kind of think of players passing the guard. I think that would be a, that'd be a fun, um, that'd be a fun game. I think in three or four years to look back on. Um but yeah, like I said, Corey will be with us here in just a couple minutes. We're going to start taking some callers. Yeah. But uh, the setup is Iowa against Holy Cross or UT Martin in round one, and the winner of West Virginia and Princeton in Iowa City in round two. Let's go to our Iowa Smokehouse call in line. James, what hey, are your thoughts up? on this draw? Uh, it's really tough, obviously, and I feel like it's more of a. It seemed like I think Cass said this too. She said it more with the Juju Watkins and maybe them being a two side, where it's like it's kind of a money. It feels like a money thing, where it's like they want the the ratings as quick as they can get the ratings. If that makes sense, just with the LSU Louisville matchup, you know that's gonna get them the the big ratings. And then you know you also have the ones in there. But one team that I think we're not talking about enough, and I'm not saying that they're gonna win, but I think West Virginia can beat Princeton too, and they play really tough defense. So like. I don't want to just overlook West Virginia like, oh, yeah, we're going to play Princeton because, like, that could be a tough matchup for us too just with the way they play defense. Yeah, nobody's overlooking anybody, not in the NCAA tournament at least. I just know that those two would be, like, two scoring juggernauts Yeah, in a sense. Um, Doesn't mean that West Virginia isn't going to stop them from scoring. Um, But in the overall grand scheme of things, yeah, if those two end up together, it's going to be a high-scoring game. That's for sure, and it's just interesting to see what will happen. And obviously, with our two home games, I'm not as worried about it. Like you said, even Princeton, I don't think I'm as worried about because it it's at home. Like if it was at neutral site, maybe it'd be like maybe it could be back and forth. You might slip up here, but being at home kind of makes you feel a little bit more. I don't. Uh, I don't tend to really worry too much. You can correct me if I'm wrong on this, Kashin, but I don't really tend to worry too much about teams that play similar styles to Iowa because I just don't see another team beating us at our own game. Yeah, I get. Makes sense. I there's those matchups with LSU and South Carolina scare me because they can change the way the game is played. I don't I don't mm-hmm. see like we saw games like against Penn State and Michigan that got high tempo against Iowa in Carver this year, and like Iowa threw up a 111 against Penn State, 106 against Michigan, 101 against Illinois. Like when the game gets fast and loose, I I I'm. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really afraid of those kind of matchups, even if they're. I mean, if if everything is going well, yes. But all you need is one game to be off, yeah. and it becomes a problem because we don't have a defensive mindset to stop them. Yeah, that's sure, the only but, issue. But yeah, it would just be interesting to see. We just have to take care of our business and hope, like. Obviously, I think if Drake beats Colorado, they, the chance they also could beat Kansas State, just because I think Drake's a really good basketball team that people don't talk about in the NBC. It's obviously up in that conference, but it's also a tough conference as well, too. So I think there's a chance you could get Drake Iowa, which would be funny if you got that in the Sweet 16. But can I just say too, by the way, Iowa basketball fans should be massive Drake basketball fans this yeah, March for a couple sure. reasons. Number one, take out Colorado, potentially take out Kansas State. Number two, potentially take out Iowa State in the round of 32 on the men's side. Yeah, I'm gonna, I I'm, gonna leave, I'm gonna leave that at that. But yeah. that's that's my thoughts. Yeah, for sure. But what's your what's your thoughts on like who would you rather play? And I know this is hypothetical because we gotta get there, Kashin. But UCLA or LSU? <laughs> that's a tough one. Oh man! Um, that thinking about that matchup is giving you stress. <laughs> can you tell? <laughs> you can feel the corners all through the street through the stream yard here. <laughs> I honestly don't know. And I'm gonna tell you why. Do I think that LSU we could potentially lock in a little bit more on them? Yes. But their willingness and 
tenacity on the boards makes me afraid. Only because if Hannah gets in foul trouble, which is very likely with those two down there. <laughs> yeah. I say, especially with what they have, because so it's like they have not just one really good rebounder, they have two really good rebounders and Morrow and Reese. Yes. So like, it makes it, it just, a tougher a tougher matchup for that. It's like if you have one, sometimes you can still maybe get away with just having one good rebounder because you can still try to maybe throw a body at them. But it's like you can't really throw a body at two people. Like even if you put no, O'Grady in the I game, she has to cancel one yeah. of them out. No, I'd rather UCLA. I'm sorry. But, oh, I, I understand that they have Lauren Betts. She's six seven, but she's not as like physical, right? Yeah. And then on top of that, their four player isn't like crazy if that makes sense. So Kate could guard her, but you're talking about putting Kate Martin on either Angel Reese or Anissa Morrow. Yeah, no, I'll pass on that. Boxing her out? No, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. But like, they can actually use her properly. They still have Haley Van Lith on the perimeter. It, it, it's it, I, the crazy part is I'm not even worried about the guards. I'm not even yeah. mad about that. In the sense, in the simple sense of if we, if Kate Martin and Hannah get in foul trouble, it's over. Yeah, it's done. Like, yeah. It's over with. That's all they have to do. LSU don't even have to score. They just need to get those two in foul trouble, and we are in trouble because we don't have a bench. We don't have anything. And yeah. so, if that's the case, I would much rather not play them. Like I would much rather not. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Also surprised they didn't put USC as the two in that one, just because I thought maybe they would try to make it like a super already hard one, where it's like you, you could have but the who? potential of USC instead of UCLA in, in our in our half as a two, just because I just thought that's kind of what they would do. But it will be interesting, and hopefully all the Iowa teams can make it far. Hopefully we can make it to the finals, and at least we don't have to see South Carolina, a potential and not see South Carolina until the final four at least. Yeah, as of right now, we ain't gonna see South Carolina until the championship. Until the championship, championship, yeah, championship, championship. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is something but, that is a benefit. But you have to get past yeah, the game first, obviously. Please and thank you. Well, we if, gotta we gotta win. We gotta yeah, win gotta five games. That, yeah. Get there, and they gotta win they five games. Get there. So, we, well, I, I don't see South Carolina really losing, but I don't know. They just seem like a ah. Mm, I gotta go look at their. I gotta go look at their thing one more time. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I would take UCLA over LSU as far as matchups are concerned. But I uh, let you get to the other colors and we'll see how it goes. And uh, I just want Caitlin to go out on a good note, right? On a positive note, right? Like, yeah. even if we don't win the whole thing, I just want Caitlin to at least go out on a positive note. Like, even if you get there, you don't win the whole thing, or if you get to the final four, but you don't win the whole thing, just have her go out on a positive note. Just the last time we'll ever get to see her play, like, this stretch is the last time we ever get to see her play in a Hawkeye uniform. So we just have to kind of cherish it and just take every moment, you know as it as it comes so yeah absolutely we gotta this is a unique era of iowa basketball and we've been trying to all season but really coming down to the wire here of appreciating every every second that we have left because we'll be looking back on this for a long long time yep but but uh, enjoy your night thanks james thanks for the call. yeah definitely uh especially the the second round game assuming they get through the first round game in uh Carver against Princeton or, or West Virginia, that'll be a that'll be a more kind of senior day ish moment for for Caitlin. I think mm -hmm. that'll be an emotional game. All right, well, we have the one, the only, Corey Bratta. Yeah, <laughs> man, he's fashionably late, but he is here. Break this party up, what on my man? <laughs> I feel like I need to bring some, you know, because Sheen, you're normally the one who's got all the energy. I feel like it's a little bit like, are we just like that depressed about this? I am are shocked. Are we just mad about it? I'm just shocked. I have like no words for like. What are you shocked about? What are we shocked about? Why would you do that? Do what? Why would you do that? Do what? Why would you put UCLA, LSU, Kansas State, all okay. in the same bracket. Let's put Colorado too. Let's throw them in there. Okay. Well, first of all, as you probably acknowledged earlier, UCLA either UCLA Iowa can't play both UCLA. I and LSU. understand. So one that. of those teams is going to knock their team out regardless, right? Yeah. Um, same with. I uh, will uh, say in Colorado, Colorado and Kansas State. By the way. Yeah, Colorado. Mm -hmm. So I, I absolutely agree with you. The Colorado Kansas State thing. I didn't like that matchup last year when Iowa played Colorado. That's a very similar team, very athletic team. 
Um, now you've probably watched more Buffalo basketball than I have this year, Kashin. But they are, they're not like somebody, like they've got size, but they're not like LSU, UCLA size. No, not South different. Carolina I size. But they're like super athletic and they run the court well, they defend. Um, so that's a dangerous game. Uh, frankly, I mean, the, the post matchup for Kansas State, Iokali, that's a, that's a scary one. And Colorado has a really good post player, though. They do. Yeah. Um, so, no, I, I agree with you about those matchups. I think Iowa matches up semi-poorly against both of those teams. I think the good news is we saw Iowa play a lot better against Kansas State in that second game down at yeah. the Florida Gulf Coast Invitational or whatever that was. And yeah. maybe it's a good thing, too, with the bad matchups that they've seen them a couple of times. Like, they've, they've they've kind of experienced it, like, live and in the flesh. It's not like, a, oh, they're physical and we have no idea how they're going to play us. And and it, let, me, let me be the guy that's going to bring – more of a positive perspective on this because yeah, my first reaction too with these potential matchups is kind of doom and gloom. But if Iowa fans are serious about this team making a run and winning a national championship in Caitlin Clark's final year, they're going to have to beat size at some point. So if you're going to meet South Carolina in this national title game, or you're going to meet a, an LSU or an UCLA in the final four, I say let's get Addison O'Grady ready now, right? Like if she's not already, she should be ready, right? But as far as tournament play is is, is concerned, get her, get that level of confidence up by facing an Ioka Lee or facing a really athletic Colorado bunch and having to battle. I think Drake's a dangerous matchup just because, I mean, I was at that game in the Nap Center a year ago. I know Iowa, they won handily in Carver this year, right? I guess I don't remember that game earlier this season, but – I was in that game a year ago in the Nap Center, and that thing went to overtime, and I, I, I walked away not sure who the better team was. So <laughs> that's a dangerous matchup. So I, I think this some of this is just the committee wanting to create. We, you and I talked about that, Kashin, right? We thought it might mm-hmm. be USC with with Juju Watkins. We're still going to have to see them though to get to anything. They're still on our side of the bracket, so they couldn't. Obviously, USC did really well towards the end of the season, so they're one seed, so they can't see it's early but they still put them on the other side, the same side as us. So they were going to have to see her anyways in the final four. But to to be clear, are you saying, because I know you were talking about all these big potential matchups down the line. Mm -hmm. Are you saying you would have rather have like, uh, let's see, like a Stanford in Iowa's section of the draw, or would you rather Texas as opposed to USC as the other one on that half? Like what, when you look at that, I mean, because there's a lot of really good teams up there, a lot I, of really athletic teams. I there's, think that when you get to the two, three seed scenario, you're gonna they're gonna be great teams regardless of how you right flip it. It's just so the the other teams to get there, <laughs> like you, before you reach a two or three seed, the other teams. I would have preferred the other teams in the Texas bracket over ours. Okay. That's my point. Not the bigger teams. Like you're going right. to run into powerhouses slash really good teams eventually. That, that's, that's so what, what you're saying is instead of, you know, the Kansas States and the Colorado, Colorado. world, you'd rather have <laughs> like an For Indiana, Utah, Gonzaga. Yeah. I would much rather Gonzaga actually. Okay. They already lost once <laughs> a few times. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I just feel like, I don't like Colorado's matchup. I don't. I don't. I don't well, like it at all. Um, I think Kansas State is. By the way, uh, this is just in. I, maybe people are commenting in the chat. I'm watching it right on the. Uh, the Iowa men will play Kansas State in the first round of the NIT. So that's that okay. just just now broke over on ESPN too. So um, what was Kansas their seeding? I'm just curious. Uh, I think they're a one. Are you Iowa you one? is a one? Iowa and the NIT are they not? Uh, Somebody chat, me out. That was saying three seed. I'm looking. Oh, okay. That's that could be. I wasn't paying attention to the seed. Uh, I just know a bunch of teams were opting out. Like St. John's opted out, and so yeah, yeah. Um, they they uh, apparently Coach Patino was pissed that they won in the tournament. <laughs> I think yeah. that's so weird. Why would you do that to your kids? But that's yeah. Just can, can we? Talk, I know yeah. this is a women's basketball show, Kashin. You're a former player. You're a former coach. I understand the bowl opt outs. I kind of get that. And I guess the the whole principle behind opting out of the NIT is similar, but it man, it just, it just seems strange. Who, who what are they getting ready for? 
I well, the excuse has been the reports have been transfer portal and recruiting. Yeah, but like, what does gotta, that have to do with you playing? Okay, the football; those players don't want to get hurt before right. um, they the, the NFL draft, right? Yeah. Okay, whatever, right? None of these people, <laughs> for the most part, are going to the the NBA draft, and that's not until July. Okay. Yeah, the NBA draft has nothing to do with this. No, it has nothing to do with it. So if you're saying portals and all that stuff, you telling me you can't recruit while you play it? Like that, I think that's a load of BS. The only, the only response I would have to that, and I'm not inside the minds of these coaches, but the only response I would have to that is you have a smaller group of people on a basketball staff, whereas you have more full-time assistants on a football staff that can work behind the scenes with the portal with recruiting while you're focusing on a bowl game. I don't know. Um, oh, by the way, NBC. Iowa is a three seed. Their bottom right bracket. They're in the same. We're talking about NIT. Same section as Villanova, Utah, and UCF. Those are the other top four seeds in Iowa. I think so, they're man. using that as an excuse because they don't want to do it or whatever the case is, and they don't want to get flack for it because you can. I'm, I would you, you as a player. I would be pissed. What do you mean? I get it. I we're not an NCAA tournament, but the NIT is also really good basketball. And so why would we decide not to go just so you can further your recruiting? I would be pissed if I was on that team. I yeah, might jump in the board. Especially if you were a senior, right? Like, yeah, you just like, ended my career like five games early, potentially. Exactly. All because you want to recruit. So so you're claiming, right? And St. John, is, I can kind of understand it if you're a Kentucky or a Kansas and somehow you miss out on the tournament after going to the tournament however many straight years. But like, St. John's has not been a power. <laughs> so no, they're not like, the NFC. You would think St. John's would be like, okay, we we want uh, we want postseason play. We want those extra practices. We want those yeah, opportunities. To- a lot of people are not even getting into the portal until after the season's over, anyways. So why are we like not playing? At least you'll get your name out there and everything else that comes with that. But and you get two extra coaches. Like sit one of them home if you feel like it. Like. <laughs> I don't understand how that is logical. And I think it's just, they're just saying it just to say it because that doesn't make sense. Sorry. Can we, uh, let, let's add in uh, our NIT guy. We got Tony on the line. Tony, <laughs> you, you reached out to me, uh, what was it, yesterday and said, can, is there anything you can do to get prepped for the show? I told you, I said, I don't know anything about the new NIT format. I do know that the, uh, what the G5 or whatever you call them, the mid-majors now, those conference uh, regular season champions don't get automatic berths, correct? You're muted. Correct. Nope, correct. We're good. Okay. Yep, correct. Okay. Hey, I want to say something real quick before you say anything. I'm very disappointed. I'm the only one wearing green here. What is you guys' problem? Well, I, I'm not I'm not a Sparty fan, <laughs> Tony. So uh, I don't really celebrate St. Patty's Day. I ain't even going to lie to you. I don't either. I even got <laughs> dressed up and had like a little bow tie. You look great. But go ahead, say what you're saying. I'm just glad you got the you got the from the Hawkeye of the Storm hat on. Like, yeah, I got that. Yeah, that I have a green, green. Does that have a green? That, does, that does have a green. That's what? A green. What the world? All right. Yes. <laughs> um. Well, I do have my stuff, but I will start with uh, Jr. Jr. Koch had a tweet because um, people were talking about this with Indiana. I and saw. You know, it. we all know. Okay. Uh, do you care if I read that? I had. Sure, you can read it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, people are saying like, well, should Iowa turn down a bid or whatever? He's like, absolutely not. Go compete. Go win as many games as possible. Go get more experience for the younger players. Send the seniors out how they want to go out. So many people just don't get it. Thank you. Yeah. That's it right there. All in one tweet. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. So, so right now we've got St. John's, Pitt, Oklahoma, Memphis, Ole Miss, and Indiana all turning down invites. And by the way, as it relates to Indiana, like I know St. John's right now, it's what Rick Pitino there. Yep. He's probably got plenty of, of time to figure that out. I don't know the situations with some of those other places. Is Capel still at Pitt, Tony? Yes. Okay. So, but I mean, you have these guys, Woodson's on the hot seat and should yep. be on the hot seat. Uh, and yes. like, whether they want to admit it or not, like if they don't win next year, he ought to be done. Mm-hmm. So I would think you do everything you can. I get recruiting is important. But if you can make a run in the NIT, I just think you got a better chance to make some headway on the next year. But the only thing I can go ahead. 
I was just saying, maybe, maybe some of these teams, maybe some of these head coaches know more about their rosters and, and guys that are leaving than we do. Because if like a, if a guy knows that, hey, six of six or seven of my guys are entering the portal when they get an opportunity, why would I send them to the NIT? And I get that line of reasoning. That's the one thing we're not talking about. If, if you know guys are leaving, what would be the reason to continue playing out the season with guys who are done and aren't going to help you next year? I think that's the only thing you could argue if, if you're just going to have a huge roster overall. The other thing that's – it's a dumb argument, but I can see Indiana doing this because I think Indiana is the Nebraska version of football versus basketball. I think Indiana is still living in their heyday, and I think they think they're too good for the NIT. They think they're Kentucky. They think they're – yeah, they think they're too good. Where you they're, said, who did you say? Indiana men's basketball. Indiana men's basketball. How many tournaments have they made in recent years? Not many, but they, what I'm, I'm comparing it to Nebraska football, where we see Nebraska football fans think they're so good because they had all that success back in the Tom Osborne days. I think Indiana men's basketball fans still think this is the Bobby Knight days. But it's where, not the – keep in mind, though, Tony, it's not the fans that are turning this invite down. Oh, no, no. I'm saying I think Woodson thinks that might buy him some good graces with the fans because – they're turning their nose up to it hmm. by thinking we're too that that's the only other thing I can think of. Except for if you just go out there and beat it and yeah. win it, then yeah. everybody will be happy. It. But I agree hundred percent. Um one question for the three of you. Are you all a bracket of integrity person where you fill out one bracket and that's it, no matter how many pools you're in? Kashine, do you fill out brackets? I always like to ask former um, players and coaches. I could not. Until the last two years, so absolutely now I do. What you said you could not because you're a coach. Yeah, as a Division One coach, you can't do that. It's illegal. Yeah. So you can't even fill out a bracket in in as nope. for fun for uh, myself for what? <laughs> yeah. If it's if nobody can see it, it doesn't matter because even if like I can't discuss it, I can't put it nowhere. I can't say, oh my god, I had like so it's kind of pointless. By the so way, real quick. Thank you, James, for saying hi to MJ, who's with us tonight. Uh, uh, as for it relates to brackets, honestly, Tony, I have not. I have not. And I'll be happy to admit this. I have not looked at the men's bracket. I have in pen. Not the already. NIT, the NIT, no, no, I haven't filled it out. The NIT, oh. the women's. And the men's. Yeah. I don't. I don't <laughs> use the. I actually watch the selection show. And fill it out as they fill it no in. Way. Yes, I'm dead time? serious. Like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've got all three of them. <laughs> Why? <Yeah. written>. Why? <laughs> because Let's it's just it. a tradition. Now, I, I will say, I don't know if all of you watched both the men's selection show and the women's I selection did. show. The men's actually go down in order that make it easy for you to fill. The women's do, okay, the first seed, and then they go down to the yep. highest seed and then back up and then down to the highest seed and back up. So me, who does this pen and paper, it's like, oh, yep, I got to skip a line, make sure I got them on the right line and stuff like that. And small small problems. Small problems. <laughs> yeah. Um, the NIT has a few rule changes that will impact, like, uh, not really impact that much, but they're, th that's the only things that, are different. Um, they're widening the lane from 12 to 16 feet, which is consistent with international and FIBA rules. Okay. So the lane will be, instead of the lane being 12 feet wide, now it'll be 16 feet wide. In the NIT? Or just yes. the NIT? Just wow. the NIT. Yep. What, why, why, Look at this. See, this is, just, why we, this is why we have you, Tony. I'm just I, reporting I, the news. Yeah. I said, <laughs> Kashin. There was a was it like when did they do some weird they did have done they've some done weird some weird stuff with there's rules. a couple of there's a couple Tony, other said, ones yep okay keep going there, there's always some rules rule uh, experimenting that they do in the NIT yep uh, the other one is they're continuing using the modified timeout format for the second half which eliminates the second half floating media timeout by making it one of five media timeouts the second half media timeouts now will be at the 17 minute 14 minute eight minute and four minute marks. Okay. <laughs> and then the, the other thing that's not really a rule change, but kind of a departure from the norm is the uh, semifinals and finals will be at Hinkle Fieldhouse instead of Madison Square Garden. 
What's Hinkle Field? Bra- we're uh, Butler Place, Hinkle in Indianapolis. Interesting. So. Why, why would you go from, hold on a second, why would you go from MSG to Hinkle Fieldhouse? They might yeah, have like, something else, else, to something else uh, is booked. Yeah. Um, something just... else is booked. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, that should tell us a lot about the NIT. Hey, I'm just, I'm just no? being honest. I don't, I don't understand that. That's the only thing that makes sense. But if the NIT ain't it. changing to four quarters and advancing the basketball, I don't care nothing about Whoa. it. You know what? I just realized, Kyle. Kyle, what? you can make it over there. If Iowa makes a run, where is Butler? Where is Butler? What t- is Indianapolis. It Indianapolis? Indianapolis. It's in, it's in Indianapolis. That's there. You go, Kyle. You you are your 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 lovely uh, your lovely I'm, wife to be is near Indianapolis. I'm, I'm covering the game. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm going to sign uh, up for NIT press credentials as Corey well, Bowden's I mean, assistant. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if we're really talking about this from an Iowa perspective, Tony, yeah. the fact that potentially those last two games are in Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis is a better thing than MSG. Although if Iowa fans aren't willing to travel across town to Iowa City for the men to, to play in a Big Ten game, why would they go to Indianapolis to watch the IT? I mean, so, if they make it to that far. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Iowa. Well, now that's barring that Iowa women ain't playing anywhere near that. But – well, they, yeah, the women would be in Cleveland at that point, wouldn't they? Um, the Hold on. I've got it. Uh, second and the fourth. And the women's are fifth and seventh. So they'd actually. Okay. Yeah. That's good timing. Because Cleveland yep. and Indianapolis is not. That's yeah. good timing. Yeah. You can could, you could, you could hit them all. You, you, you can. But I'll Definitely. tell you what, if you do do that, do not speed on that highway. <laughs> uh, from uh, Cleveland, Indianapolis to Cleveland, because them cops will get you. Trust me. I, yeah. In my recruiting days, we all know as coaches, do not. <laughs> do not speed on that highway, because you're going to pick up a ticket immediately. Um, okay. The only th- oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was going to I was going to go back to women's for a second. Go that's, ahead. What, that's what I was actually going back to. I was actually going to transition into that. Um, because right. you know I'm a diehard about all this bracketing stuff, Corey. Yeah, I reached out to people and um, they said the men's selection committee and the women's selection committee use the same bracketing guidelines. Mm -hmm. The reason our bracket is so tough is because they had to balance it out in such a way because any top four, yeah, the top four seeds in the Pac-12, they had to be all mismatched and misbalanced. Mm -hmm. And because they had so many top seeds, this is the only way they could make it work out. I don't believe it. I understand. <laughs> no, nope, there's another way. I don't want to hear that. I, I know we don't want to hear it. Conspiracy theories sound great and everything, but you I. You could have gave us Utah. You could have gave us uh, not Oregon State. You could keep them wherever they at. You, I don't want no parts of them. I'm glad they in uh, South Carolina bracket. Nope. Like, do you want Indiana after the beatdown they put on the Hawks a few days ago? Like, they're well, you, can't have, you can't have them because of the same conference and stuff like same that. conference. Yeah. What are you What are you talking about, Tony? So with the men's with the women's tournament, Indiana could not be the four seed in our bracket as the in one. Our bracket. The top four seeds all have to be different conferences. Yeah. So that's a women's bracket. That's a women's and men's, bracket women's and, and men's. Yep. No, it's yep. men's too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Last I knew, last I knew, the only criteria there was you couldn't play somebody who played once in the regular season, correct? Until the second round, and if yeah. you played them twice in the regular season, you couldn't play them until the second weekend. That's what I thought the only criteria. I didn't know about this the, one four the, stuff. The top four seeds, four seeds, all have to be from different conferences. Correct. The mm-hmm. only way is if there's five teams from the same conference that make yeah. it in the top four seeds. Okay. Then they can violate that bracketing principle, as they said. Gotcha. All so right. they have to balance it out, and then they also have to use well, adding up the overall seed line to make sure the balance brackets balance out as best as possible with just the top four seeds. So I guess they could have put K State somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. It's <laughs> not. A great, it's not a great draw. But if no. like you're looking at the other four and five seeds, you've got Oregon State as a three. Indiana can't play Iowa as a four, can't be in the same section as a four. 
Uh, Oklahoma is a five. Virginia Tech would have been the only other I'm option. Not Oklahoma. Iowa played yeah. Virginia Tech. Iowa played Virginia Tech, Tony. But that doesn't matter because it's 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 in the it's in the third round. It's in the Sweet Sixteen. So that part doesn't. Okay, matter. so that bracketing criteria remains if they're out of conference. If they played them once, as long as it's not played the first in the second game, round, first two second, first two okay. games. Yeah, right. I would take Oklahoma over Colorado as a five seed. I don't know what. Yeah. yeah. No. So and I mean, Oklahoma's in whose bracket? Who's who's? Oklahoma's in uh, South Carolina's bracket. Okay, well, yeah, they get the easiest. Okay, fine. And, yeah, and, Oklahoma, and, yeah, Oklahoma, yeah, Oklahoma, yeah, because there are five. So there are fives. So that part doesn't matter. It's only the top four. No, okay. I'm just saying yeah. where I get your point about the top four and how the Pac-12 kind of yeah. screwed everybody up. So, yeah. okay, fine. But even from there, if you know you've had to put these top teams in our bracket, we are the second number one seed, you could have eased up on the rest of them. Yeah, five through seven or ten yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, but they didn't do that. They gave us no. Like, the, <laughs> well, then the, and then I, I think we've covered. I think you guys covered it. But like all the interesting storylines, they don't. They don't do this from everybody I've talked to. They don't match these up. But LSU could play Louisville. Yeah, I know. You know, I'm very excited about that game. <laughs> you know, you think about where Haley Van Lith used to go, and then now playing against them. You know, and. Of course, and I, I did tell y'all they was gonna match up Caitlin Clark with uh Juju. Uh, no, she's not. Yeah, because yeah, it, yes, that would be the final. That would be the final. That would be the final four. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Okay. I don't look down. I'm sorry. No, I I said you were hey, right. I here, here's my prediction: one of those teams will lose. Uh, uh, between who? Between Iowa and USC. Like Before I get. Oh, you don't. You think neither one of the two will not make it to the final four? That matchup will not happen. Is what I'm okay. saying. I think there was a. I, I, if you had told me there were one was a one and one was a two, I think putting them on the same side of a bracket as two different one seeds, that's a shot. It's a dart in the dark trying to predict. Well, it was it. the only way they would meet. That's what I. That's what I'm saying. But like, yeah. That, so there may be some politics behind it, but I. I just think there's yeah, more. If, there's if more they wanted to force that matchup, they would have been the two in Iowa's region. Yeah. Yeah, but they couldn't be a two, so they didn't have a choice in the matter. If they wouldn't have won and all that other stuff, and if they were a two, they would have 100% been in Iowa's bracket. Yeah. So they're going to try to meet them uh, up. It's like, and who said, you said that patch, passing the torch kind of thing? Yeah, they want that so bad. Kashina, I want to ask you real quick because there's some people in the chat talking about Molly Davis. Uh, I haven't heard anything specifically on Molly. It was mentioned here that uh, she was uh, still – she was standing without crutches at the Big Ten tournament. And, of course, there were reports Lisa Bluter talked about their hopes of getting her back. It made sounded to me when Lisa made the comment on Hawk Talk on the radio here a week ago that they expected her to be back for the first round of the tournament. Yeah, right. <laughs> no? You don't think so? No. Listen, okay. I told you this before. And I know we don't have the, at least I haven't seen it, the complete specs on Molly's complete injury, right? So, but Molly don't look like she's nowhere near ready to play. So if anything, I, I don't see Molly, even if she is able to grab a minute or two, and I don't think it's going to be in, in the first the first round. I don't even think it's going to be the first weekend. All right. But if even if she is able to grab a couple minutes, Molly ain't played in. If you have not played basketball in one week, it's like you ain't done nothing in a month. It is, you're completely out of breath. You're completely out of rhythm. You're completely, I mean, seven days will tear your whole, your whole everything up. So I, I, I'm very happy that Molly didn't have a season ending injury, but I do not see Molly being able to help us. I well, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. This is where we're going to be three weeks removed from the injury. Oh, I'm aware. So we're going to be three weeks removed from the injury and, uh, guys, the reason I bring it up, Kashin, is because if you're going to ease her back into action, you're going to ease her back into action when you're blowing a team like Holy Cross out by 30 or 40. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, are gonna... you catching my drift when I say she's not going to be ready for the first weekend with that being in mind? Okay. Yeah. Well, and somebody in the chat uh, just said that Lisa Bluter somehow said tonight that Molly Davis is not ready and she's still limping. Would you keep uh, Would you keep Sydney Falter in the starting lineup even if Molly Davis was healthy after the Big Ten tournament? Without a doubt, I would too. Uh, they did announce the men's stuff for times. They haven't announced the women's. The men's <laughs> will play. 
Well, I think there's a lot. They had to wait for the men's thing, I think, really, because the men have to – they're contracted into playing now that opening round game. But I know the women are on the – I think it's Thursday. Is it? No, it's – is it Friday, Sunday, Monday? No, no, Saturday, Monday. Sorry. The you know, I love, I, I just, I love how involved and invested you are in the NIT. And frankly, Tony, <laughs> if I had the revenue and if people want to get together the revenue to, to make this happen – I would be happy to send you to cover the NIT at all the locations, and you can with you can wear that that hat. You can be a member of the media as a member from the Hawkeyes tournament because you are more passionate about this national invitation tournament than anybody in the history of mankind. So thank you for being here. I do appreciate that. And um, anything else I'll to just, add on the NIT? Yeah, I'll just <laughs> I'll just close out. It's 8 p.m. Tuesday night on ESPN against Kansas State. <laughs> Okay. You said Tuesday? What, you, what day are you saying? Tuesday. I'm sorry. Tuesday. As Tuesday. in like two days? Like, yes, as in not then, tomorrow. Yeah, like we don't have to jump on a flight. Uh, the second right. round game, it's – it's <laughs> the NIT doesn't really say any of the dates afterwards because you've got to make sure like arena availability and stuff. The second round game would be either the 23rd or 24th. <laughs> and so who would that be? If they beat Kansas State – it would either be at Utah or UC Irvine would have to come to Iowa City to play. So correct me if I'm wrong, the game against Kansas State is in Carter? Correct. <laughs> I'm sorry. I no, just think it's well, I missed that. I missed that. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you were, yeah. if you so the first to... game is in Carter? Correct. All right, if, y'all, if you want to do something, be there. Yes, come on. Thank you want to send, major, uh, huh? want to send Tony to cover the game. All you have to do is raise five bucks. <laughs> well, that's the other thing I was going to say is season ticket holders can buy tickets now. If you're a men's season ticket holder, uh, general on sale to the public goes at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And come Kelly on, wants guys. to know when do season ticket holders get a, a chance at women's basketball tickets? I do not know that much. That no. They don't even know that. Probably. The way that I understand it now, it's it's a weird thing with the women because the women actually, you know, sold out all of the season tickets. You mm-hmm. actually have to have an allotment for each away team that's going to be there. So yep. I don't know how they're going to figure out whose season ticket they're going to take away to say, "Look, I'm sorry, you don't get to keep your season ticket." You know what I mean? You don't do you get feel to keep- like that. Feel like what? I'm sorry. It shouldn't matter, technically speaking. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because unless they've changed it, and I don't know that answer. But when Iowa is playing, the mm-hmm. only teams that should be getting will call or whatever you want to call it should be whoever they're yeah. playing. Yeah. So it shouldn't change because it'd be the exact same as in season when whoever you're playing gets the same amount of tickets that is there. But so, I, so maybe they should have those seats set aside. Like, I didn't know they that. They should, regardless. Yes. So, I mean, so you would assume, you know, that I, you I do remember, though, when Iowa played, I think it was 2000, oh, no, early 2000s. I actually went to all the home NIT game for the men's. And if you buy tickets for that first game, if they get follow up NIT home games, you get dibs on that seat. Follow up. The season ticket holders get dibs first and then. After that, if you bought tickets to the first NIT home game, if there's a second one, you get it. Now, it's going to be very interesting if Utah does lose, how they're going to figure out where, if Iowa also gets past Kansas State. When is that game? The second game? Yeah. You're talking about? It would be the 23rd or 24th. That's a Sunday or Monday? Uh, No, Saturday. Or Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So it would have to be between... Because it couldn't be Sunday, obviously, because that's when the women would be playing. Yeah, it would have to be the 23rd, and maybe that's why it's a double day. Yeah, because the NCAA runs both tournaments. They run the NIT as well. The yeah, NCAA there, does. Go not, to, not, that this doesn't, not that this matters, but oh, wouldn't there be a different floor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What no, it's just a sticker, y'all. It's just a sticker. Yeah. It's oh, not, yeah, they, just, they just change out like, a, like a piece. Yeah. Doing yeah. That's it, what do you mean? It's just a sticker. It that's is all a that's on the floor. NCAA yeah. sticker that is on the floor. That's it. But <laughs> I mean, aren't no... there other elements of the floor? Like they don't no. they don't leave no. the MediaCom court or whatever that nonsense yes, they is. Do. They leave that on there for the NCAA tournament games. Yeah, the only thing they put on there is an NC. It is still your court. 
So it's they only put an NCAA sticker just like they put an NCAA sticker on your jersey. That's it. And all right. so all they have to do is peel that up, put the, the NIT one down, <laughs> and then go on about your business. But yeah, they leave the court. It's still your court yeah. or whoever I, court it. Why is Kashin yelling at me? She's just I'm excited. We're all excited. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I have the answer for this problem, though. Go ahead. I have the answer. Play in an extreme arena. That might sell out. That's what people are saying. Yeah. Doesn't where matter what that? That's where the that's the new like volleyball hockey facility or that's, whatever, yeah. right? Or yeah. Yeah. On it's campus? in Corp. Yeah, yeah it's, it's on it, campus. It's in it's, it's, a, a, it's a university arena. owns it, actually. Right? Yeah, I think arena. Was the volleyball nice. moved out of Carver? Uh, I believe so. Is that right, Kyle? That's nice. Yeah, yeah they did. Uh yeah. volleyball. They, and they had some wrestling stuff in there too, didn't they? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Not Kirkland. Who said that? Y'all bogus. <laughs> well, you know they did. I, I, hey, that is not a horrible like yeah, brainstorming idea you because I no Iowa men played an NIT home game at the Mark in the Quad Cities. It is not out of. Yes, presidents. not Kirkwood though. Have oh, you I been know, to Kirkwood? I've been to Kirkwood. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> we, might on, well. at Kirkwood, we might as well play it at West High School. Yeah. I mean, honestly. <laughs> All right, here's what we're going to do real quick. I, I just want – Tony, you're, if you want to stay on. Oh, I'm good as long as – you tell me when I need to leave. I've no, got you're not. Time. We're not. We're just uh, – just like the title, the, the name and the title, we're just hanging out here. Right. But here's what I want to do. I want to actually share because I, I have some people asking about looking at the actual bracket. I mean, it's very easy to Google the bracket, right? But we might as well actually look at the women's bracket um, since we're here. So this is the official look from uh, the NCAA website. And I guess what I – I figure we could – probably do here if that's okay Kashin, is you're more of an expert obviously than any one of us clowns um as far as these different teams across the country so we've already <laughs> talked a little bit about iowa's path we'll delve more into this but um when you look at south carolina's path i mean there's no question in anybody's mind right now they're the odds on favorite to win this whole thing um you know they're 32 and 0 obviously They've been dominant. They've beaten. Yeah, I'm blind. Put that up just a little bit more, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there um, we go. Thank you. So, so this is this is their section. I guess we can start here in in uh, the Columbia region. Is that what they call it, or, or regional? Mm -hmm. no, Albany one. Uh, Albany one. Okay, Albany one. There you go. Albany one. South Carolina Sacred Heart Presbyterian. Any chance that Michigan State, who by the way bowed out a lot earlier in the the uh, women's basketball tournament than I expected, the Big Ten tournament. Um, any chance Michigan State or North Carolina could provide any matchup issues for the Gamecocks in that second round? No. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, th this is – okay, we'll just move down. Let's just move down. So Oklahoma – we talked about Oklahoma's a five. This is a Florida Gulf Coast. SPCU is winning that. That's, a, that's an upset. Why? Have she just SPCU? doesn't respect Oklahoma. <laughs> so you just don't like Oklahoma. No, it's not – I'm not – I'm listen, I, it, I watched Oklahoma live. When they play yeah. here, <laughs> so I'm aware of what they have. FGCU is a very, very good basketball team. So if we're talking about an Oklahoma team who has their struggles, they ended the season well, which is great. But FGCU, they won 29 games and they've upset people all the time in the tournament. So I know they're coming into this game thinking the exact same thing. That would be an upset for me. Does uh, does FGCU give Indiana a run in the second round if they get through Oklahoma? Is um, homeless playing? You guys yeah. realized FGS, yeah, FGC, we played FGCU earlier. Do you guys even remember that? Yeah, that's all. I, I was going to bring that up, Tony. So Iowa played FGCU, basically mm -hmm. de facto home game for FGCU, or should have been. I know they were probably more hot. Should have been. <laughs> should have been. Uh, and Iowa trounced them earlier in the year. Yeah. So I understand they're 29 4. Oklahoma is not us. No, now, I understand, but I'm saying they're a, they're a very weak 29 and four. If you look at their resume, have you seen some of the? They beat Kentucky. They beat. I'm, look, I'm looking at their their resume right now. They well, played USC, Kentucky, Iowa, North Carolina, Duke, all in non conference. So it's not like they're a normal just 29. Like they've been tested as well. Okay, we'll see. That's just my prediction. They lost. But again, they, they got blown out by USC, Tony. So I don't care if you play USC. That's great that you played USC, but you lost. You got blown out. You got blown out by Iowa. Their one good win was against North Carolina. 
as far as their one non-conference win was against North Carolina, got blown out by Duke. They beat no, Kentucky. They have, not beaten, they have not beaten anybody besides North Carolina. They beat Kentucky. Just my opinion. They beat Kentucky. Is that okay? Yeah, they yeah. beat Kentucky. They, the only reason why I'm basing that off that, like I said, is because they've done it many times. Yeah, it's a Kentucky like, team. And by they, the way. They, they've never had crazy schedules. For whatever reason, when they hit March, they become dangerous. So I'm just, and I don't think Oklahoma's a strong team. So there's that. Just and remember. Again, if Indiana is without Mackenzie homeless, then. And fair why, you, why, are you call it, why are you calling her homeless? <laughs> she should have been here on the last episode, Kyle. <laughs> hey, the chat's going off on you right now. Just, just can, so we can be, be sure we're clear on this. Tony, don't bring up how they beat Kentucky. Kentucky finished 12 and 20. Kentucky's horrible. It's still a power conference team. That's it what doesn't I'm trying matter. to say. This not. is the NCAA tournament we're talking about. We're talking about them upsetting a, a Big 12 team that's 22 and 9. So bringing up Okay, I'm talking about their only good win was against North Carolina. That's all I'm saying. They got blown out in every Steve, other test they had. Steve said homeless is still limping. So they might be homeless. And if they are, Fairfield might get it. Okay. So tell me about one Fairfield. One is crazy. What, what do we know, if anything, Kashin, about Fairfield? You don't often see 31-1 and one teams in crazy. the tournament. They um, have not lost in conference. They were 21-1 and one or 20-something and oh. It's crazy. Could if, if hypothetically homeless is – ready to play and play at home because that's where those games will be in Bloomington. Could Indiana match up with South Carolina? Wait, with who? It, again, if McKenzie is there. Yes, that's what I'm saying. If, about that. Yeah, if that's what I'm saying. If she's there. Move. If she is there. If homeless if she, is there, yeah. If they're not homeless and she yeah. is there and she is Mackenzie Holmes, then yes, I think that they have a possibility to do that. Yeah. Because if you think about it, um, Tennessee mm -hmm. has given U.S. has given South Carolina a run for their money every time. And they should have so, been in that. Yeah, totally should have. We're not even gonna go there because they were yeah. tripping. But yeah, they could on their home court. But I mean, not on their home court. They would play them when. Albany. See. It'd be in Albany, Albany, March 29th. It's a possibility. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like at the point where I'm going to mark it down as an upset. <laughs> yeah. But it's a, it's a possibility. It's, it's, it's yeah. a possibility because Indiana can shoot. We know yeah. that. And if they can shoot and McKenzie is doing her thing, right? I think it's a possibility. That's a really, really unfavorable first round matchup if, you, if you're the Hoosiers. Like, Without even, yeah. I've not watched a single game for Fairfield, but I'm just browsing through their resume here, and I'm seeing. First of all, they're 31 and one. That says enough. Like as a four seed, if you hear you got a 31 and one team, a team that was in the top 25 at the end of the tail end of the season, like that is. And by the way, anybody want to guess what their one loss was? Maybe somebody knows here. I their know. one loss was. To I was going to say. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tony. I was going to say Mount Pleasant because Fairfield, Iowa, but I'm sorry. <laughs> no. no, no, no. Their <laughs> one loss, their one loss was to an SEC team that's in this tournament. That's Vanderbilt. So, like thirty-one and one without a single bad loss. Now they don't play in a good conference. You know they're playing the the Quinnipiacs of the world night in and night out. But I mean that's hard to win thirty-one games because she I mean, yeah he's peaked it out in a thirty-two game season. That, that's that's like I said. That is if I'm Indiana, I'm pissed. <laughs> Just because you you're a four seed and you're playing that, like that's yeah, that's tough. And you're so, a top four seed at that. So Oregon State, uh, Eastern Washington, to kind of round out that section. Of course, uh, that will be hosted in Corvallis, Oregon. The Beavers being the, the top team in the section. I guess we skipped over Nebraska and A and M. Nebraska. Oregon team. State gonna make it all the way to all but the Elite Eight for sure. Hold on, let me see who else is in there. Ooh. They, they're definitely going to make it to the Sweet 16, but then it get a little rough. So you don't have a lot of faith in the the uh, uh, in Big Red right here in this section? Have you seen Oregon State play? Uh, I've seen them maybe once. I, oh. I just – Nebraska's playing really good basketball. Well, I, I would, and Oregon State has ended the season very well. I, I Obviously, the Pac-12 tournament, et cetera. Well, Pac-12, they was beating each other up. But, I mean, Oregon State is is a problem. I didn't want them in our um, on our side, and I was very happy that they are where they are. Um, 
post play is going to be a very exciting matchup. That's the one thing I think I would watch that game for is to see the two fives go at it because Oregon State's center is is real deal. So I would I would watch it just for that. But I still have Oregon State edging out. And uh, Ole Miss, um, Marquette, and then Notre Dame, Kent State. Um, any thoughts? You got the the MAC champion. Um, and let's see here. I'm just looking at some notes about Notre Dame. I believe they're missing somebody. Um, maybe Tony, you can find that. I'm pretty sure Notre Dame's missing somebody. Yeah. Say it again. Well, she ain't played almost the whole season. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Um, um, but but I, I would I would think Notre Dame is still if there's anybody that's going to challenge. Uh, N- Nile I or no uh, Kylie Watson. Kylie Watson. Mm-hmm. She'll yeah, miss okay. she'll miss the rest of the season with a torn ACL. That was just after they learned their seating. Yep. Okay, that's what I just see. I I just had the ACC network here and was uh. They've been dealing with so many injuries. Lord have mercy. So yeah, that's a that's a pretty. If you're talking about uh, an Oregon State or a Nebraska, maybe making a run um, to an Elite Eight, maybe it's it's by way of uh, a somewhat favorable draw there with an undermanned, underwomaned uh, Notre Dame squad. Uh, so then you go down to the the Portland Four region. You got Texas Drexel. You got Bama, Florida State, um, and then of course, because she mentioned Utah taking on the Jackrabbits, of South Dakota, twenty-seven and five out of the Summit, and then Gonzaga. UC Irvine, that sounds like, based on what you said earlier, Kashin, you, you feel like that's a pretty favorable draw for the Longhorns? I do. Um, I think their second-round match, I think Florida State's going to edge out Alabama, just my take. Um, but that should be an interesting game. I'm not going to say it's a tough one, but it should be interesting, depending on who shows up. Um, Utah has some str- has had quite a few struggles this year. They have the potential to do well. Um, cause we've seen them at their best, but we've also seen them at their worst. So it'd be interesting to see what Utah shows up for that. Um, yeah. And Gazag, you know, the Zags on the women's side, maybe the team that doesn't, as far as that, uh, athletic department that they don't get as much respect as the men traditionally, but that's been right. a good, really solid women's basketball program for quite some time. And you look at their record 30 and three, we talked about Fairfield 31 and one, mm-hmm. Uh, why why do you not have as much faith in the Zags just in spite of the impressive record? You want to know why? Because um, I'm still petty at the end of the day, and the Gonzaga, Zags, whatever you want to call them, ended my college career, so I don't like them. <laughs> right, it's very simple. Not, no, there's no – I don't like them. It is what it is. <laughs> but so everybody's aware. I'm going to take out my bias. They did beat Stanford earlier in the year. They did. I remember that. I was very sure. Why? What was it like? It was like a 15, 20 point. It was a. It was a big. It was damn. It was like twenty points. It was crazy. Yeah. Um. There should be some bitterness from some teams that were, and I don't know who was was in the first four out, but um, they were part of the the WAC was part of the uh, or the West Coast Conference was part of the um, bid stealer group because you had Portland knock off the Zags in the championship and sneak in. So. Gonzaga's in I mean, as an at large see, as a four. I could see Gonzaga getting to the Sweet 16. It's a possibility for sure. Yeah. Maybe one, maybe the most favorable section of the draw. And then you got mm-hmm. Tennessee, Green Bay, NC State, Chattanooga. You get Cyclones, a familiar opponent, taking on Maryland. Um, and then Stanford, Norfolk State. I, I look for Iowa State and Stanford in that second round. Mm-hmm. And I, I that's an interesting matchup given some of the size challenges that Stanford provides along with on the flip side, what you have in Audi Crooks, who just turned out to be a revelation for the Cyclones. Yep. Um, I'll be curious to see how Crooks um, tries to score over such length. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's a different kind of length. And she considers herself a big, well, not because she considers, she is a big time shot blocker. So I'll be curious to see how she kind of maneuvers herself around that. I mean, I know she uses her size and weight pretty well down there, which she should. But it's different when you're dealing with a shot blocker. So I, I think that would be a great matchup. And I know NC State is pissed. Because <laughs> your second round is against Tennessee. Oh, man. They got, probably got the worst <laughs> of anybody in that second round matchup. And they have that. a 
They have a Chattanooga team in the first round uh, that won yes. one of those games. Yeah, I, NC State probably got the worst three seed out of everybody. That's terrible. <laughs> okay, so then we slide over. We'll slide over to uh, the Portland three uh, region. You've got USC taking on uh, Corpus Christi. You've got the Jayhawks and the Wolverines, the 8 9. You've got Baylor, and then uh, they'll play the winner of that Vanderbilt team we talked about. Uh, we'll play Columbia in the first four, and then Virginia Tech, a team Iowa faced earlier this year in Charlotte playing Marshall. What stands out to you in that section? Uh, Virginia Tech is a wild card for me only because they also have an injury in their All-American Kitley, or preseason All-American in Kitley. So I don't know <laughs> about them um, as much. Vanderbilt, Columbia, I'm watching that just because of the drama behind it. <laughs> no tell, other tell reason. Us about, tell us about the drama. What, what are you talking about? So Columbia's coach, after they lost in their conference tournament to Princeton, called out the SEC and pretty much just said that they shouldn't be getting as many teams in. She pretty much called them trash, if you ask me. Um, and here we are. <laughs> First matchup against an SEC team. I think it's hilarious, and I can't wait to watch it just because I hope they win. But either way, I love a little NCAA March Madness drama. <laughs> and that, that's, just, all, that's all. Can I do some breaking news, Corey? Go, go ahead, Tony. On on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. It's the Iowa women's it's basketball. Um, Iowa women's basketball sold out. There will be no public on sale for the NCAA first and second rounds in Iowa City. Both sessions on Saturday and Monday are sold out. Every ticket sold on SeatGeek is verified and trusted. And all tickets sold are backed by SeatGeek's buyer's guarantee. So there you have it. It is completely sold out in Iowa City, as expected, obviously. All right. Perfect. The, uh, did you did any of you see on Twitter what the West Virginia coach said after the draw? Oh God, what now? Is it drama? He, the West Virginia uh, coach said, "Win one, and then we take out Caitlin Clark." That's what he said right after well, the draw. You know what? Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. Problem, yeah. That's exactly what I would do. Mm-hmm. End a career uh, early. That's I would tell anybody if we playing against her. Yeah. Hmm. Tony, can go ahead, continue. Real, real quick, but I, I, I'll cut you loose if you want to go, Tony. But I do want to ask you a question. Um, I've been and I've been out of. First of all, I'm right now. I'm not home, and uh, I'm kind of out of the loop. But there have been some rumors swirling about Fran McCaffrey over the last 24 hours, and I just had somebody reach out to me literally seconds ago and say, "Hey, are these rumors true?" No. Um, doesn't sound like they are, right? Yeah, it was. It's it's funny drama, funny story. Uh, there was a guy who actually sent all of that to that account that posted all that, and it was fake spoof news just to prove how bad this news service was. Okay, it, it, it's it's not news. <laughs> I have I have no problem staying on. So whatever you want to do, if you kick me off, kick me off. If you want me to stay on? I'm good. I've got time. Well, let's of let's uh, let's continue down. And, uh, Kyle, if my if my internet takes a, uh, a a jump here, just be prepared. But um, we we talked about the the top section of, or the po top uh, section of the of the uh, Portland three region. You've got Syracuse on the bottom of this is a six taking on the winner of Auburn, Arizona. You've got the Huskies and Jackson State, Duke and Richmond. And then the Buckeyes playing Maine, Ohio State, obviously coming off a really disappointing showing in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, favorite to get out of that section, um, Kashin, I would have to think it was, it's probably UConn um, as the three, but you, Ohio State is the two. Yeah. Um, as much as I hate a nut. Um I'm probably going to have to say Ohio State might get that one. Now, oh. and the only reason why I'm putting it on there is because Ohio State's a pretty good defensive team. They're also very aggressive. UConn is, has a lot of injuries. Um, they're low in numbers. And so it only takes one person to get in foul trouble. 
and it changes everything for UConn. That is, they are, they don't have much leeway when it comes to that. Um, so that is why I feel that way. But UConn has a test before that, so <laughs> that should be an interesting um, matchup that they've got going on there. I think it'll be UConn and Syracuse. Um, but still, that's going to be a test before they even get to the next part. Well, what about Duke? Have you ever watched? Have you seen Duke in person? I know um, they're close to you in your neighborhood, kind of. I don't, I don't really. I, I mean, I'm not. No, <laughs> I don't think they have like a. I don't think they're a test. Let's say that. Okay. Are there concerns right now with the Buckeyes? I mean, uh, they didn't play well. I, I wouldn't say they played exceptionally well in Iowa City. Mm -hmm. um, final game of the regular season. Then they go to the Big Ten tournament, lose to Maryland in a blowout fashion. Like, mm -hmm. they're kind of limping in as a two seed right now. Yeah, you have that way of thinking of it, or you have another way of thinking of it. They got done early, so they have a lot more practice. And I can tell you what, I'm pretty sure those practices have been very hard um, to get them back in the flow of things. So at the end of the day, yeah, they went out early, but they also were able to start working on things a lot quicker. I mean, a lot quicker, maybe a, what, a two days, two days. Well, remember what we said when Iowa was done, how many days they were going to take off. They didn't have to do that. So they've got more, they've got more, more two days, practice. Two less okay. days of play, maybe one or two less of rest as well. Mm, yeah, maybe. So, I mean, it'll be interesting nonetheless, but UConn versus Ohio State should be a good competitive matchup okay then albany too the one that most people here are uh, concerned with of course uh top part of that section being played in iowa city as tony mentioned earlier apparently uh tickets are sold out no surprise there for uh, first and second round action you've got some maybe some chatter already from the mountaineer program um i, I think it's probably a tricky team I mean, you see uh, again looking at overall record without having princeton's resume pulled up 25 and 14 as a nine out of the Ivy League, you know, makes me think that's probably a legitimate team. I'd know nothing about Princeton. Uh, I've, I've not watched a second of Ivy League basketball. Do you watch Ivy League basketball, Kashin? Like, as a women's basketball? I watch Princeton. Okay. So tell us about what are they, the Tigers? Tell us about the Tigers. No, I was telling Kyle beforehand that they're just, they're going to be. If they make it past West Virginia and we end up playing them, it's going to be a very high scoring game because they're very similar to us in the fashion of they're running, they're scoring, they're shooting threes, um, that scenario. So it'll be a very high scoring game. Um, West Virginia is a very defensive minded team, like very defensive minded. Hence why that head coach said what he said, um, because that is how he's approaching this in the sense of we're going to be the team that shuts Caitlin Clark down guaranteed. That's what he said in that, in the, wherever they watch the show. Um, so it should be, you know, defense versus offense against those two. We'll see who wins. And um, again, I just think it's a loaded, loaded draw below that. You've got a really athletic Colorado team that faced Iowa last year in the Sweet 16. Um, you've got a Drake team that's familiar with Iowa. It's 29 and 5. Um, didn't really challenge Iowa and Carver this year, but but gave them problems a year ago in the Nap Center. You've got a Kansas State team that's one of Iowa's four losses this year. Iowa got them back later on a neutral court. You got a Portland team that is coming off a big upset win over Gonzaga to win and get into this tournament. So that's a that's a real that that, that is the most you know, Iowa beside the point, you know, that is most loaded little section of this entire mm -hmm. bracket. You know, one thing, Corey, to think about, though, is if it's Colorado or Kansas State and they'll be playing Iowa and Albany, I would bet that would be a very, very pro Iowa crowd. I would exactly. not be shocked. I would not be shocked if you hear within the within the next 12 hours that that Albany regional is sold out. Don't you think it's going to be pro Iowa regardless of? Where oh yeah, they anywhere go? they go. Yeah, no, I understand, but I'm just saying that that that's something to think about for Iowa as they advance on. Is these will not be true neutral site games. However, not for us. 
Yeah, not for us. That's what I mean. Yeah. However, Kansas State, Drake, both played at Iowa this year. Kansas State won in Carver. Yeah. So those two teams know what it's like to go up against an Iowa crowd. Right? Is that fair? And I would say I haven't went back to go watch that Sweet 16 matchup, but I'm pretty sure I remember Iowa had a pretty pro-Iowa crowd against Colorado in the Sweet 16, right? Where where was that? Where was Seattle. that? Seattle. Was that Seattle? Seattle, Seattle last year? Because they got Colorado and Louisville out there? Yeah. So, yeah. I think. I was pro, I was pro-Iowa. Yeah. All right? So, um, anyways – uh, Kashin, tell us all about Portland at 21 and 12 as a 15. That might be the one team I don't know nothing about. I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> that might be the one team that I have no idea. I'm just rooting for them. That's all I know. <laughs> they beat Gonzaga. That's all that, I that's know. About that. <laughs> so let's make something very clear. Um, because of where I was placed in this draw. Right, different seeds, but you potentially have the same Sweet 16 matchup as last year with Colorado there as a potential meet. And then you have potentially the same Elite Eight matchup if somehow Louisville gets Louisville. out of that section below, which they'd have to go through potentially LSU and UCLA. Or maybe you have a Creighton who Iowa lost to two years ago with a familiar face, uh, former Hawkeye on the roster that's uh, she's turned into a terrific player for the blue Jays. So, um, and then obviously UCLA um, angel recent LSU. Um, there was somebody in the chat earlier that brought up Kim Mulkey's face. Was she, was she making a face when they got their draw? Was she not happy? Kyle? She you, I know really you did. Yeah, I think she was, she was annoyed. I think at the three seed, but I don't know. She's always was annoyed that, about something. I was going to say, was that just her normal face or was she yeah, actually <laughs> I, mean, I, didn't think, I think she was just sitting there. She was just yeah. being Kim Loki. I didn't think yeah. it was like over the top, like disgust. Yeah. I think she was just kind of like, I've been here and next who we playing. Yeah. But Kashin, you're kind of a you're kind of a Kim Mulkey apologist, so let's not go there. <laughs> Absolutely not. You do don't not, want her wardrobe? Do not ruin my reputation like that, Corey. Okay. <laughs> Like Michael Jordan, registered Kim Mulkey fan. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> no. Um, uh, and you got another team uh, mid-major with an amazing record, uh, Cal Baptist. Um, you know, in, another California team playing uh, UCLA. Um, so, anyways, I've always found it interesting. Especially, it seems like we get more of those. And, and maybe that's not the case. Maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. But it seems like we get more of those. Uh, mid-major teams in women's basketball that dominate those smaller conferences and then come into the tournament, you know, or how good are they? It's hard. I think it's harder to seed those teams because they're not playing legit. I mean, they're not playing as many great teams non-conference. A few of these teams have. We mentioned Fairfield scheduling that their one loss was to Vanderbilt. Uh, so, but anyways, I know very little to nothing about. I, I, does anyone know what the Cal Baptist uh, mascot is? I know Houston Baptist is, I think, a wolf or a husky, but what's Cal Baptist? Anybody know? No idea. Kyle? <laughs> Lancer. 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 Lance up Lancers. That's this Okay. Thing. There you go. The Lancers. So that's our draw, folks. If anybody uh, wants to see that again here in a little bit, uh, I can throw that back up on the screen. Um, Tony, anything else from you? I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna are you posting anything for um, a bracket challenge for women's and men's? Or um, yes, yes. Um, we did that last year and had some wrinkles to iron out last year with how all that went down. Um, and yes, I think we're I think we're going to be doing that again this year. So I've got to get on that. That'll be one of my projects tomorrow. So correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't, I, I'd like to have, I've got two screens here and I'm trying to handle a bunch of these tabs. The game between, uh, let's see here. Make sure that I'm not still sharing my screen. So uh, Holy Cross UT Martin. Do we have a date on that yet? Is that? Yes. Wednesday? Thursday. That's Thursday. Thursday, Saturday, Monday. Because you always got to have a, you got to have a, a break. You gotta have a day break. 
Yep. So okay. Thursday, Thursday, off day Friday. Saturday, they'd play Iowa. Winner of that, off day Sunday. And, then and as it relates to NIT schedule, men play Tuesday, Correct. but could not play on Wednesday. They'd have to wait till Friday? No, the men, the, the NIT does it so weird. So the first round is know. they don't play until <laughs> the 23rd or 24th. Damn. Yeah. So they'll play the 19th, and then they won't play again until the 23rd or 24th. Well, you're traveling, so I understand that to a to an extent. Yes, yes. You're not traveling. Uh, I mean, well, I guess you can say it. you got the first four teams that are traveling. <laughs> that would that would assume Iowa. That would assume they win first of all, and that would also assume that Utah wins as well. Okay. Otherwise, Iowa would get a home game. Like the the NIT, it's just straight higher seed hosts. That's it. But I'm saying those teams are traveling. Like yes. once you get the NCAA's, you're staying in a section. Yeah, you're staying in. Well, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Your first three games are travel, and then after your first three games, you're into the semifinals, and that's all at uh, Indianapolis. So. That's all I got. I'll let you guys go and listen away. So, Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate it, sir. All right. Um, well, Kyle, I don't want to keep you. You're you're welcome to, to hang around. Um, got some some comments here to catch up on. Has it, Have you plugged your, your golf stuff already? Have we really hit that home? Have, <laughs> Everybody needs to make sure they subscribe to Kyle Spence Golf uh, on all your favorite platforms. Um, don't forget, we have you know we're I've got a Division One college basketball legend over here, here and then I've got here an NIA. Whoops, wrong way. And why is my thumb going the wrong? I can't even figure this out. NAI legend over here. Can I? Yeah. <laughs> it's backwards on my screen. Anyways, so. Uh, Kyle Spence golf, um, taking the world by storm and, uh, I, man, rough way to end the players championship for what's his face. Uh, oh Scotty, Scotty's Brutal. a back to back champion, but, uh, first back to back in the history of the players, but man, Wyndham Clark got stuff and Clark. hit it stiff on the Island green 17th and had a 20 footer to force a playoff and horseshoe lifted out. Brutal. Yeah. Wyndham Clark has got a good future ahead of him though. He's, <sighs> He's exploded over the last year. He's probably a top 10 player in the world now, at least on the PGA Tour side. I don't know about Liv, but maybe altogether top 15, top 20. He's, he's one of the best ball strikers in the world. Lars Lee, appreciate Lars being a, a becoming a YouTube member. Maybe this is Ioka's father or grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Lars, Lars is a women. Is well, Lars a men's name, Kashin? Yeah, what I think so. Ask me that. I am not the the, the expert All right. on everything. All right. Well, Lars, thank you regardless if you're related to Ioka or not. Doug with the super chat. Our men might be in trouble. Kansas State just beat Iowa State. That's what cost ISU the Big 12 title. We will be at the game Tuesday. Go Hawks. Look at Doug. Hi, Man, Doug. Hawkeye men. Beautiful. Kyle, what does, the, what does the Iowa fan base say if Iowa, the France squad, finishes the season? With three state losses, <laughs> well, there'll be we'll, nobody there. To, there'll be nobody there to boom. That's for sure. <laughs> Doug will be there. Doug won't boom, but Doug will be there. Bo boom for us, Doug. Hey, Kashin, should Fran McCaffrey should be, should he be on the hot seat? Not yet. Okay, one more season. Now next season, if, I'll if, be they, if they don't make the tournament again next year, then <laughs> it be. yeah, next season I might be a little. Not looking too good there, Fran. Balrog says, uh, what day is the first game for Iowa? We said it's uh, Saturday for the, the uh, women. The men will play in the NIT against Kansas State on Tuesday. And uh, Kelly, yes, Saturday. Because, again, um, the first four game is, we say Thursday. Thursday correct? Mm -hmm. Thursday. Um, okay, Josh wants to know about guard play. So, uh, whether you're talking about the men's game or the women's game, we're always told, Kashin, that guard play, great guard play wins championships. Obviously, Iowa has the best guard in the country, best player in the country in Caitlin Clark. But depth could be a concern, especially if Molly's out that first weekend. Um, I, again, without looking in depth at these matchups and haven't had a chance to do that yet with potential matchups against um, even maybe a West Virginia, and certainly we don't even know who the first-round opponent will be yet. Is that a concern for you right now, lack of backcourt depth? Um, yes and no. I think the key is to 
um, going far in the NCAA tournament in general are X factors. Your stars are going to do what they've been doing all season. It's the X factors that get it. Just think back to the championship game last year. Who won the game for them? It definitely wasn't Angel Reese. <laughs> it wasn't Alexis Morris. It was the one kid who barely was shooting. I don't even know a name right now. Yeah. Like, that's when I'm – X factors are what changes games. And for us, that is a Gabby Marshall. That is a Sydney Falter. That is Kylie Fearbach. That is those kids. The, you can put Kate in there, too. That's fine. Uh, but – if we don't have our X factors, we may not make it out of the first weekend. That's not what we want to hear. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I mean, now, do I feel confident? Yeah. Because of how we've been playing. Our X factors, how they have been playing. They've, you know, if, you, if this was happening beginning of February, I'd have been like, oh, nope. <laughs> Summer yeah. with, we're not we're done. <laughs> You know, but we our supporting cast has really come on late at the end of the season. Gabby Marshall, I like- Kate Martin, everybody's kind of come on. Sydney and Falter had a humongous Big Ten tournament. Like, so I'm feeling confident in that aspect, as should everybody else. But the facts still remain the facts. I like, I like, like we kind of mentioned is- earlier, I think if Molly does come back and she's Molly, her having her come off the bench, because I think they need the size with, Sydney and Falter, but also like even watching some of these like college games and also NBA games, like guys like Chris Paul now come off the bench and run the second unit. I think Molly would be really good at that coming in, making sure that she's in every second that Caitlin's out for sure. But like also giving Caitlin a break off the ball when you have some second unit players in to create offense for other people. And uh, Michael wants to know, is this a better team than last year? Kashin, if you had to say so right now, is this Iowa team better overall than last year? I don't think they are. First, yeah, of all. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. No, uh, that that no. <laughs> when, 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 when say they, they, that they've far. had there. There's no. I think they're just built differently too, and that's why it's maybe yeah. harder to to Damn. gauge that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're definitely built differently. Sydney is so much better than she was a year ago. They don't have a post presence like Monica. Um, you know, Hannah's found the ability to score in bunches more than she ever had playing her role. And she's also playing out of position now um, mm-hmm. without Monica Sinano there. So um, that's a factor as well. Doug wants to know what would the crowd be like in Albany if you had to guess once Iowa gets there? I mean, again, as I mentioned earlier by, by uh, Tony, it's going to be pro Iowa, but I mean, is it 75% Iowa? Is it more than that? I'm probably going at least 75. Yeah, I mean, like, Colorado, I don't know. That's, a tr- that's a trek. I mean, that is far. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I doubt they'll, they'll have some sprinklings. Um, Kansas State, maybe. You might get a little bit there. I'm trying to figure out who else is down there. Um, you got Drake. They don't travel like that. They're still Iowans, however, so Iowans travel regardless. But um, they still don't travel like that. So it's, it's definitely got to be set at minimum 75. Kaylin Thompson uh, quoting Iowa women's basketball beat writer Jeff Linder, who says, uh, quote, it's not a good sign. Blitter was hoping Molly would be farther along. So uh, there you go. Um, it didn't look like it didn't look like from that article that she was going to play the first game, but it didn't say anything about she after that. Playing, she is not playing the first round. I don't Mm-mm. think she is either. That first weekend, it's a no-go. Mm-mm. Yeah. Um, it could be an interesting uh, comment. Caitlin cannot have these slow first half starts where she shoots 0 for 8 from 3. That cannot happen again. And Kashin, that was a bit of a trend in the Big Ten tournament with Caitlin. These slow offensive starts, first quarter, mm-hmm. even in the second quarter. Um, is there anything you attribute that to specifically? You'd say maybe fatigue, but then it seemed like second half she started to get her shot to fall, especially in the championship game, she 30 in the mm-hmm. first second half against the Huskers. Um, is there any explanation or how do you address that as a coach, someone who's as great as Caitlin is? She just got to get back in the gym and get the feel right. Um, 
at the end of the day, she's been shooting <laughs> for years, right? And so for her, it's just getting that feel, getting that touch right. I mean, I did say that some of that is attributed to the target center. Um, but either way it goes, I mean, I still have a lot of faith in Caitlin in regards to her shooting ability. I just think that she needs to make better decisions when she does start out like that. That would be my one thing with her. Stop just jacking up threes when you're not hitting. Get to the yeah, right. you know, like shoot, you know, regular human being threes where your toe is like, you know, close to the line. <laughs> like regular things, not Timbuktu back there. Um Go to the rim. Use your size as an advantage. Another gripe I have, if if Caitlin is being guarded by a short person, why don't we have a play to, to, to post her up? Give me something. Like, let's get something easy down there. Like, you, she's six feet. Like, you're telling me that we don't have not one play where she is posting up a smaller guard? Anyways, keep going. Sorry. <laughs> Before we get to our next caller, um, can we uh, real quickly? I don't know how much you've. I know you. I think I saw you post something on Twitter about it. I have not talked to you about the recruiting news from from oh. Iowa, but um, I, I suppose we should probably have you comment on it. Iowa landing five star Addison Deal out of Cali um, over the last few days, uh, and she is a consensus top fifteen player nationally. Uh, my I posted a, a segment on my thoughts regarding Addison. Just watching her on tape, I've not seen her in person, of course. But uh, she's got a little Caitlin in her as far as she's a scorer. She can score from multiple places on the court. She's really good. she got really good handles, can can uh, finish really well at the rim. The only thing I said on tape, and Kashin, you may say this is a stupid thing to even comment, but uh, there were times I'm watching her shoot threes where I'm like, eh, not a real strong rotation on the ball. I'm guessing that that kind of thing can be improved upon. But she has shown range on tape. What, what have you seen from the tape you've seen from Addison Deal? I mean, I think that she is a solid Lisa Bluter kid, if I'm being honest. Um, she is a point guard that I think will help us. Um, I think that she does have spurts of Caitlin, and I'm not talking about shooting. I'm talking about everything else in regards to her handles, in regards to her passing, threading the needle, that kind of thing. I mean, you're not going to get another Caitlin. There's only one. So the fact of the matter is you're never going to find another person that's going to shoot like Caitlin Clark. That's insane. So, <laughs> um, but overall, I think it's a very good get for the Bluter cast. And I think that uh, if I'm not mistaken, she was at that Ohio state game. So I'm sure that sealed the deal. Um, but nonetheless, good get. I think it propels them for that 2025 class. Um, Cause you know, once you get one, big time recruit other recruits start to take notice and want to be a part so i think it's a great get but like i said in my tweet iowa fans please take a bow because i know that lisa and the crew are definitely selling you guys to the recruits in regards to how much you love and care about their student athletes um how much you travel how much you are you know things like this post games there's so many different things that recruits would love to see because their parents get to see that. Um, and so take a bow because you are a big reason, I'm sure. How does this compare? How, how does for people who are kind of live in the bubble that is Iowa women's basketball right now, and we probably take it for granted a little mm -hmm. bit. How does this fan base compare to even other powers across the country? Yeah. I mean, I think that there are, I think the only other one that I can think of might be uh, South Carolina where they travel pretty well, still not on the, <laughs> still not on the same spectrum as what we have seen, but at the same, on the same token, it's the care and love and passion of your fans. Um, how much they're going to ride for you on social media or how much they're going to go to bat for you in the grocery store or, you know, just things of that nature that this fan base really does thrive on. Um, and like I said, Iowa, and they did this when I was there, so I know they're still doing it. Iowa does not have any professional sports. You are their professional sports. And as we know, it is a Hawkeye state. So nobody cares about the other one. So at the end of the day, 
you know, all of the fans love you. You can go to the supermarket, you could go to the store and kids are coming up to you like, oh my God, can I get your autograph? I've been there, I've seen it, I've done it. And I can only imagine what it is now, <laughs> you know, in regards to that. Um, and those are things that you can't get everywhere. Those experiences you just can't get everywhere. Yeah, and, and I just think going to California, being able to land a recruit from that part of the country right now, that's hard to – I mean, that would – that just shows you the, the footprint that Iowa now has, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. because I mean, it does help that uh, UCLA and USC are coming to the Big Ten, but, you know, we're – It does. <laughs> like, back burner. <laughs> I know it sounds like her brother plays um, – Bass, that's what I was told this week, is that her brother plays like, Juco ball somewhere in the state. But, like, in general – I, I just think that's that does show the presence that, and, and it does help. Like you said, I mean, kudos to, to Lisa Bluter and the staff being able to take advantage of maybe part of it's the fan base, maybe part of it's the success, and then part of it's the fact that you add UCLA and USC and there's more exposure for mm -hmm. family and friends and the West Coast. And mm -hmm. this is exactly what you want. You, you'd hope that Iowa, the Iowa men could do, Iowa football could do, uh, start – hitting some of these other areas of the country where there are really good athletes that mm -hmm. for a long time have been hard to come by. Let's go uh, to our next caller. We've got uh, Darrell and VP and Kyle, I'm going to throw this to you just for a minute as I get some technical issues resolved here. Darrell and VP, welcome. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Hi. Doing good. It's good talking to you all. So to me as a fan of women's basketball in general, it's different than the men's because it's felt like for years now, not just this year, one region has been really difficult compared to other regions. Now, I know this year it's because the Pac-12 dominance, but even in years past, it's felt like, oh, my gosh, this region's so much harder than everyone else. And as somebody who's a fan of the game, I want to see these top teams play in the Elite Eight, the Final Four. And I feel like those matchups are somewhat mitigated because in the Portland 2 I'm sorry, the Albany two region, for example, I've got four teams I think could be final four teams in that one bracket, mm -hmm. whereas other regions I only see one or two. Mm -hmm. And to me, that hurts the overall quality of the game. I agree. I mean, like uh, I think Tony was talking about, that Pac-12 kind of screwed us up. Um, it screwed the committee up, should I say, in regards to sticking to the rules and then – trying to make it, I mean, there's a few different rules, um, but I think you're right. Usually there is every year, there's a, a, a bracket that's a little bit tougher. I mean, this one feels a lot tougher than ones in the past because UCLA, LSU, um, Iowa, Colorado, <laughs> all of those. And I'm sure people had LSU, UCLA, and Iowa in some of their top fours. You know, and right. final fours in that sense. And now it's like, <laughs> you, you're not getting that. One of them is making it. And now you don't have a final four with an LSU or a UCLA possibly. And so it's just kind of unfortunate. Um, but at the same time, it should be very interesting early on um, than it has in the past. Well, two, two things about that too. Like number one, if Caitlin makes it through all of these games, they're going to have five or six games with incredible ratings. Like there's, yeah. there's going to be five or six must watch games like on national television. The other thing I want to say too about that is like, I understand it's a hard region, but like the opportunity that they have in front of them, like if they were to go through, if like, if they were to go, if they were to go through Kansas state, Princeton and LSU or UCLA and then beat, um, Juju in the final four and then South Carolina, like those, that's the type of legacy run that would cement her, I think is the greatest athlete in Iowa history, any sport. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could even go further than that. So like, yeah, it sucks that they got some tough games, but like on the, on the one or 2% chance that they make it through all of them, my goodness, what an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, the, Another factor for Iowa and whoever comes out of this region is just the beat and bang they're going to take. Because like South Carolina, USC, they're going to have basically cake until the Sweet 16. But 
I, it just is the way it is in women's basketball. It's it's getting deeper, but it's not as deep as the men. And I think the portal's helping out. I think Caitlin Clark's helping out. I think some players in the past have helped out. Even LSU and Kim Mulkey, I think, have helped out because they're a villain. So I think we will get that depth in the future. But as right now, there's only a few teams that can win it realistically each year. And I'm not sure. Have you all seen the betting odds for who's going to win it all this year? I don't pay attention to that. No, I have not. Well, it's uh, according to ESPN bet, the top four is South Carolina, who's just outright favored, Iowa, LSU, and Stanford. What do you think about those as your top four? Wow. I mean, usually if they have two teams in the same region that are contenders, it hurts both of their odds, right? Because they got to go through each other. So I'm trying to figure out, like, how is that even possible? <laughs> yeah, how you have a second and a third favorite that would meet in the quarterfinals. I mean, right, I but it just goes to the depth of the region I was talking about. The yeah. second and third best team to win it all is in the same I, region. I remember back when that – your final four always every year was your number one seeds every year because yeah. there just wasn't the depth that you were talking about. And now you're seeing more and more people getting knocked off more and more, you know, upsets and things like that. The men's tournament has always had that. There was that Cinderella. That's where that came from. Right. We didn't have many Cinderella's in women's basketball. It was like cut and dry for a very long time. Now you're seeing a lot more, mid-majors like you said with the transfer portal definitely helps uh mid-majors you know doing some upsets and even just better overall teams two seeds three seeds four seeds um that are making it further and actually have a can contend for a national champion championship so yeah we are getting deeper um and where women's basketball is heading is definitely in the right place Right. Corey, I'm not sure if you heard uh, top four odds, according to ESPN bet to win it all. South Carolina outright favored. Then Iowa, LSU, Stanford. Do you have those? Uh, do you have those numbers in front of you or just the order? Uh, I just saw it on ESPN. They've been doing the show for two hours and they just threw up the top four. It's according to ESPN bet. So I can do some research to try and find it. But I've I just found it interesting because you had two in the same region in Stanford, who's not even a one C and no USC because USC is getting a lot of hype with Juju Watkins. And for them not to even be in the top four, I thought was surprising. Yeah. Like I said before, I, my guess is Iowa and Ellis. I mean, I know it's easy to say that, but I will be, I'll be surprised if Iowa and USC match up in the final four. I just think one of those teams, like Iowa's route to the final four is so difficult already. And I just don't, no, maybe I'm speaking completely out of turn. I just don't know much about USC after Juju Watkins. It's hard to get to the final four. We like, that's just, it's hard to predict those matchups. So um, LSU is probably the most talented team, not named South Carolina in college, women's college basketball right now. So, South Carolina is a minus 135. Iowa is a plus 700. So they're clearly taking South Carolina against the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Doug wants to know if they would do a, a watch party at Carver for games in Albany. I would hope that they would for, yeah, for the NCAA tournament. Um, I think, frankly, with as, as big as Iowa women's basketball is right now, I think they've missed out on some opportunities to do this kind of thing. Some other time, even for the big 10 tournament. Like I, I know that they had like on, on the Sunday, they had the men's game that night, but you know, you're telling me Kyle that a sold out Minneapolis for the big 10 championship game this past Sunday, wouldn't have at least gotten Carver half full for a watch no, it party. Would have. It wouldn't sell tickets for like, if you're trying to generate revenue or just fan you can even have people come in for free. That's fine. Speaking of uh, speaking of tickets, Corey and Kashin and uh, Drill MVP, you too. What do you think? Uh, what do you think tickets are going for for or all sessions tickets are going for right now on Vivid Seats? Where for Carver? Five hundred dollars, Corey. For just any any seats? Any? I'm looking at the cheapest seat in front of me before fees, and it's for all sessions, so you get to go to both games. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'd probably say like 500. What about you, Drill MVP? What do you think? 
No, wait. I, you said both games? $1,242 for both games. Yeah, I was going to go into the 1000 range. You said it was what? 2000, and that's for section N, which is just left of midcourt, and then row 37. Yeah. You, you also get the West Virginia Princeton game, I imagine, as well, right? Since yeah. it's all sessions. Yeah, if it's all sessions. Yeah, you're right. So it'd be three games, but so three games, two of them featuring Iowa. It's 2300 bucks before fees. So fees are another probably, what, 150 bucks on top of that? Yeah. Kyle, you can't uh, listen. I understand we're putting them in the next round, but we don't, we don't want to hear the women overlook Holy Cross and UT Martin. It's happened once before. So yeah. if I was there, I understand they're chumps and they're probably not going to do anything. But if I was a player, I'd be like, hey, you got to focus you, on them. What are you talking about? It's happened. But what are you talking about? It's happened before. What does that mean? There's been one, one, a number one seed that has lost to a 16 seed in women's basketball history. I okay. believe it was Stanford in the 90s. They lost to Harvard. So it has happened before. Now, I doubt it's going to happen. But if I was one of those women's or the player, I wouldn't overlook anybody. Somebody because it's been not too long ago, a couple years ago. And that's in the men's, though. No, it was in the women's because I remember them talking about it, and they were talking about Harvard and how it was the last time that had happened. I just don't remember who it was. Somebody. Yeah, it was a couple years ago. Um, by the way, fun fact for everybody while we're uh, waiting for that answer. Uh, Brian in the chat Maybe says Hannah's uh, number four <laughs> in field goal percentage in the NCAA this year, 64.3%. So not quite Daniel Gafford, Kyle, but still pretty good. <laughs> Anyways, that's an inside thing, center for the Mavs. And by the way, the Dallas Mavericks took down the Denver Nuggets earlier today on an unbelievable left-handed shot at the buzzer by Kyrie Irving. So uh, give me thoughts on that, Kashin. No, I don't watch the NBA until playoffs. Okay. All right. Well, you Corey, can Denver and four. Just Denver and four. <laughs> Denver and four. Yeah. You and Kyle can hang out together. Go ahead, Kyle. Well, uh, I was just going to say, Harvard defeated Stanford in 98. There is no other 16 really? seed. Then somebody must have got really close. There's also I remember watching a game, and that was all they were talking about because the 16 seed was sticking like with them. I just didn't remember if they actually pulled it out or not, but I remember that stat, and I was like, dang, that's well, a not, long time. not only has there only been one 16 seed upset, there's never been a 15-2 upset, and there's never been a 14-3 upset. Ooh, I got to go look to see if that's a possibility this year. Yeah, and then there's been seven 13 versus four upsets compared to 23 in the men's uh, on the men's side. And on the men's side has had 22 14 seeds have won their first round. And 10, 15 seeds have won. Yeah, and Kyle, three in a row for the men, 15 versus two. Yeah, three 15 seeds in a row, three years in a row. And guess what? This year, I think it'll happen again. San Diego State over Iowa State. Mark it down. <laughs> I hope so. You said three 14 as well, you said? Uh, no three 14s. I mean, this is according to Wikipedia, but no. It's no. Okay. No, no, no 314 upsets, no 215 upsets, just the one 116 upset. That'd be a 314 is Oregon State, Eastern Washington, LSU versus Rice, NC State versus Chattanooga, and UConn versus Jackson State. Yep, doesn't seem like that's going to change this year either. <laughs> I'll be a Rice fan, though. Of course, you yeah, do they uh because of that fight that occurred at the end of the South Carolina LSU game? Oh, yeah. Is there any players that are going to be out that game? I, I know it's Rice isn't great or anything, but that could matter if they get in foul trouble. It's There's just six, Cardoza. There was well, LSU had six players out, yeah, but that's not how it works. The only person that does that has to set out the next game is Cardoza because she got ejected for fighting. Oh, everybody else gets to play. Okay. That to me that's a stupid thing because they all contributed to the fighting. And well, first of all, can I just say something? She she wasn't mm -hmm. can, can I just make a statement? She was not fighting, all right? Yes. I thought that was way overblown. Way overblown. I've seen well. so much Kashin, I have seen so much worse nah. on that side. Yes, I have. I Listen. Yes, I have. If anybody pushes me the way Cardoza pushed her, we're fighting. 
But they did the fight. <laughs> what? But all she did was push her over. It's what I'm saying. So or, I want to see. Right, I want to see Kashin. Car- I want to see Kashin and Cardoso go to blows. <laughs> well, if saying. anybody pushes me like that, we're fighting. <laughs> what? You push me to the ground. It's different than Flage giving her like just a like a you know get out my face kind of scenario. She pushed her flat on the floor. I'm getting up and I'm swinging. It's very simple. Like that's the okay. fight. I understand what you're saying, but and if there if a fight commences, that's one thing. But what I'm it saying won't. is pushing somebody to the ground, in my opinion, is not a fight. Is not a fight. Like that's a that's a flagrant two. You're gone, but yeah. to suspend somebody for the next game, I just think is I, I just don't like that person. Well, that's why, Corey, considering you, that's the flagrant, too, that's why she got say, out. here's hey, look, I am sticking up for the women's game because I think that I don't know what the rules are on the men's side, but to me, if the um, a male had done that, I don't know that they would have been suspended. If they kicked him out for fighting, he's getting suspended. I don't know anyway. that they would have kicked him out for fighting, Kashin, is what I'm saying. I think that would have been a double T. It's unsportsmanlike. It's it's, no, it's flagrant. It's a double T. You're gone. I don't know that you call that fighting in the men's game because I don't it's consider that to be fighting. I see that happen all the time in the NBA, Kyle. Yeah, it's fight. Well, the yeah. NBA is not the same. Well, so, you know, uh, you know <laughs> the yeah. girl Johnson Johnson's brother. He was let out of the arena in handcuffs and arrested after that incident. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. he ran onto the court. That was absolutely okay. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> I just think that's wild. Like that has to happen. I think it's well, hilarious. When, people, when when was it you, Kyle, or somebody reached out to me after that happened? It was like, hey, did you see what happened with LSU and South Carolina? Somebody's fans are on the floor, and I'm like, oh my goodness, is this another malice at the palace? Did anybody watch the malice at the palace live, or was I the only oh one God. that watched that? Back in, you watched that live, Kashin? I well, I don't know if I watched live? it live, but I've watched that whole thing from I've start to YouTube. finish. I was watching that live, and I get that it was a long time ago. I get that was in the NBA, but that is a fight. <laughs> when you have well, yeah, that's like the Steven, ultimate though. That's when like you the have Stephen Jackson and Ron Artest laying haymakers going into the stands. <laughs> four little Detroit Pistons fans with bifocals on. It's over. Like that's yeah, Nothing you're going beer on his head. head too. Here's my thing, right? Women in in general, it takes a little bit more to get to that point. Now, there are some people who it don't take that much work to get to that point, right? Because we had those two girls last year who somebody pulled a ponytail and then they, they was throwing they was throwing fists, right? right? Like, okay, cool. But my only thing is this: if Cardoza had pushed somebody else, you understand what I'm saying? It would have been a problem. That is why she got suspended for that because they were able to grab Flage before she was able to lay hands on this woman because she had pushed her to the ground. So she had to get up in their eyes. They consider that an instigation of a fight because if Flage would have gotten up in time, I don't think we would still be having this conversation because she probably would have threw a, a fist because you can't throw somebody to the ground like that. That's crazy. I don't care. Man, woman, don't matter. I if she would have put hands on her, I'd have been like, "Well, hell, it, that just it, it is what it is." <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Hence the brother jumping in the stands and I don't know what you call it. Kyle, remind me know. what happened. What happened with Connor McCaffrey? Was it a year ago or two years ago against Southeastern okay. Louisiana? No, no, no. That was mm-hmm. Illinois. I know what you're talking about, Kashim, when he was right up against the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember I'm talking about Southeastern movie. Louisiana. There was something with Joe Toussaint. And remember the the SID or assistant SID for Sila got fired because he called uh, oh called Connor a freak right on social media he called Connor a freak okay, <laughs> okay. yep there was a lot going on that year I guess yeah. what I'm saying is go back and watch that because I remember like when I see somebody I don't remember exactly what the move was on Joe something like the guy got ejected for something to the extent of a swing or mm-hmm. like even though it was in game action it's a swing. I guess I don't know what the difference between what Camila Cardosa did and a swing like that. that because is- it's in the game. It's not fighting. That thing had nothing to do with Carmilla. Nothing at all. Camila had nothing to do with what had happened. She came in from a side and just completely shoved, you know, well, not shoved, you know, I, she flattened yeah. her to the ground. Yeah. If, if uh, what is her name, Watson? Um, the girl who Flage actually pushed. 
if yeah. she would have responded, I don't think it would have been fighting, quote unquote. Like if she would have pushed her back, I don't think it would have been fighting because they were the ones that were in. It was just a retaliation, should I say. But Carmilla coming in from nowhere and coming in and creating such force, I think is what elevated it to fighting. Because like, what are you doing? Like, why, why are you even involved in the first place? Like, relax. Um, but either way, it is what it is. What did, I what did, it what did you, uh, Kashin, what did you think of, uh, what did you think of Angel Reese's reaction to that situation? She did was already hurt. So like, oh, she was okay. limping before okay. all of that happened, coming down the court. She was already limping. So when okay. it happened, she was already on, her, like reaching for her ankle. And then when yeah. it happened, she just went to the bench and the trainer immediately saw her. So I was like, she was like, oh, hell no. I can barely move as it is. Nah. I ain't got it in. <laughs> she, took the, she took the time to get some extra attention. Yeah, she was like, okay, yeah, yeah. Let me let me go. Let me get the time out. Time out. <laughs> yeah, it's like a free. But no, time I out. don't think what the, the slack they were or well, whatever they were giving her, I didn't think it was necessary because she, you could see she was like visibly limping. Well, from, then Kim Kim Mulkey in the post game presser was like basically said to Cardoso, like, why don't you pick on someone your own size? <laughs> what did you think about that comment, Kashin? Well, I was I was. What did you think of that comment from Kim? I don't even understand what the point of it was. Like, what? It, so okay, so she she pushes Angel Reese and put her on her ass. Then what changes anything? Like, what? 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 What does that yeah, do? And Angel was already hurt. So who's the next person smaller than her that was even involved? I, that's I, it. Just her. There's nobody comment, else. Her size. I think she was upset about the game and everything else. But the comment didn't make sense because even if Cardosa decides to push Angel Reese and flatten her just like she did Flage, because that was a hell of a push. What? How does that change anything? That's what Nothing I'm saying. The dynamic, the dynamic of what Kim Mulkey said implied to me that Kim Mulkey was actually instigating some sort. Like when you say, "Well, I would have liked her seen her seen her push Angel Reese," isn't that basically implying, "Oh, she would have she would have shown you what's what"? Like, isn't that? Basically I mean, what yes, saying? she she so is insinuating. Comment. That's her. Yeah, that's her way of saying my player would have whooped you. That's a stupid <laughs> comment. As if if you're Kim Mulkey, she should have been publicly reprimanded for making a stupid comment like that. Yeah, but you know why she? That's was. coaching. So, hey, hey, Kashin, that's co called coaching malpractice. I agree. That is called coaching malpractice. Hey, uh, but if guy. that's the case, then Mulkey has had a lots of those. Yes, because she she just she. <laughs> Kim Mulkey is um, a very, what's the word I want to use? Um, Unlikable coach. <laughs> no, depends on who you're asking. But her personality is that of a fighter, right? Like she is not going to back down from anybody. She is going to say what's on her mind. That's why the current players like her because Angel Reese, she going to say what's on her mind regardless. That's why they like each other. I'm. It is whatever else you want to say with that. But at the same point, well, Angel Reese wasn't making no money like that before she got to LSU. So she wasn't doing that in Maryland. So technically speaking, <laughs> she started making money when she got with Kim Mulkey. So either way, I mean, hate it or love it, and I don't think Kim cares, but hate it or love it, she's going to be who she is regardless. And I think, again, is that the way you want your child at that time to present themselves because when you get into the real world angel reese you can't you you can't just be out spewing stuff out the side of your neck like you can't be saying anything under the sun honey and that's just not how it works you're gonna have to learn how to approach certain things and take the high road at times but you know kim monkey just she just let them run loose <laughs> I, all i'm saying about the money thing is you talk about likability, like, okay, Angel Reese likes Kim Mulkey. She likes playing for Kim Mulkey. She's also making dough playing for Kim Mulkey. Yeah. Right? So, like, just like mm -hmm. Haley Van Lith is and Anissa Morrow is making money playing for Kim Mulkey. Right Angel Reese is getting the most out of being under Kim Mulkey because Kim Mulkey is behind her whenever she says something off the wall. <laughs> like, most coaches are not going to be behind you when you say something. She backs up. She backs up Angel Reese's unlikable comments with even more. Yeah, like she <laughs> doubles down on it. So, okay. like, 
Yeah, I they 100% get be, uh, think they get the to be the villains together. Kimoki. Yeah. Uh, T Hawk out here says we need Madden Greenway. Uh, that would be quite the ad. Uh, what is she, 2026? I saw Maddie believe. Greenway because I saw a, a, a video of her and she looked real short. She's small. I mean, she's guard, she's point guard. That don't mean nothing. I was just asking. Like she looks like she's like five, six. I mean, I can look this up here, but she's like a 2026 20, recruit. So, uh, oh, let's she's see far here. out. Five so she's five eight. She's five eight. Oh, okay, that might be generous. Well, what are you? What were you listed at out of high school as a as a sophomore? Probably five nine. Okay, five eight. Well, one of those. weren't you like? weren't you like all Big Ten or something like that? Yeah, but me and Maddie Greenway <laughs> is not the same. <laughs> you <Yeah. laughs> know. Uh, She's 16. Yeah. And that's no knock to Maddie Greenway, but I don't think that our level of athleticism is on the same market. So that, that hey, her dad, her dad is a pretty good athlete. That's uh, that's her dad. Her dad was a pretty good athlete. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. Really but good. my five eightness <laughs> was getting 10 boards a rebound a, a game. So that's different. Her dad wasn't Kashin Alexander either, was she? Or was he? No, he wasn't Michael Jordan. Come on now. <laughs> That's true. Uh, D. Rollison, appreciate the super chat. Uh, so much more energy at the Target Center for all the women's games compared to the one men's games game from the fans. Winning creates more success. Well, yeah, I think that's pretty much fair. Kyle, uh, I haven't talked to you since the, the men's um, debacle two days ago. Uh, or what has it been three days now? Man, time has gone by fast. That was Thursday. Um, yeah, Target Center is a lot different. And I guess to, to add on to that, Bobby wants to know about Kashin's comments about the Target Center the other day about it not being real, not really being a shooter's gym. Uh, he wants to know, does uh, using the Wilson NCAA ball take some getting used to uh, using the Big Ten tournament, but Iowa normally uses the Nike ball? Uh, Lisa Vooter usually before the Big Ten tournament, all they do is use Wilson balls or whatever. Whatever they're going to be using, that's what they will be using in practice leading up to it. Um, so the, it is a different ball. Not gonna, I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. Definitely a different ball, but um, it is not as if they just got to the Big Ten tournament. And that was the first time they touched the ball. No, Lisa does a pretty good job of making sure that they have practice with those the days leading up to it. Girl MVP, are you still here? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just enjoying the conversation. <laughs> I was going to say, we're, we're taking Darrell and VP along for the ride tonight. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, that is my job is just a guest. It's just bring good content out and great discussion. I felt like that was great discussion. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. You got anything else, sir? Um, I was just going to ask you about Angel Reese's comments after the game. She was talking about how lots of teams are scared of South Carolina and LSU isn't scared of South Carolina. Do you think that's valid, that teams are literally afraid of South Carolina because of what they've done over the last few years? Where in the world she get that from? Because Iowa beat them last year, and that was nowhere <laughs> near on anybody's bingo card. So I don't think that anybody is afraid of South Carolina now. Tennessee has took them to the wire many times. I don't think anybody is afraid of that. I think she was just talking out the side of her neck like she normally does. It's my take. Do you have a lot of respect for Angel Reese, Kashin? I like Angel Reese as a person. I think she's a very nice person. I think that um, she has a good heart, giving back to her community, doing things like that. However, I think once the Iowa game happened and all of the whole racist comments started, that pumped her head up entirely too much. Just going to call it like it is. I feel like she was not like that before. Angel Reese has always talked stuff, right? And I've always loved that about her in the sense of she backed up her stuff. So I was like, okay, like she got a little edge to a little Baltimore. I like it. But then, like I said, when the whole racist stuff started, it just went to a whole nother level. Like, and I haven't quite gotten to that level with her. So... I mean, can we just be clear that doing this following Caitlin Clark around on the court is much different than Caitlin doing this for two seconds going to the bench during a timeout, correct? At her trainer, by the way, not at another player. I was very, I was, I, I, 
I got a lot of slack for that, of course, with me being an Iowa fan and the second and third. And I just kept telling people, listen, at the end of the day, there is all, and I'm going to be real with everybody on here. I don't know how many people are on here, but I'm going to be very real. There, as the black community, we already have a fight, right? Always about, you know, whether it's being taken seriously and not being called thugs on air and everything else, right? We already have a fight on our hands. Do not give anybody the opportunity to say that we don't know what we're talking about. We were fighting for Angel Reese for something that didn't need to be fought for because her following this girl around for 50 seconds is not the same thing <laughs> as Caitlin Clark. And we were fighting just because it was black and white, not because of it actually made sense. So nobody wanted to take our argument seriously because it ain't make no sense. Like, <laughs> And I kept try, I was trying to get people to understand that. Like, let's fight for something that actually makes sense. If Caitlyn was doing that the exact same way, absolutely. She should be able to do the exact same thing and get no flack for it. But she shouldn't be able to. I, I, I would not ever condone Caitlyn Clark doing this. Agree. Following her around. <laughs> like, if I saw Agreed. her do that, I'd be like, that's a terrible, like, act like you've been there before. Agreed. And so that was my whole argument. Like, you guys, like, stop. And I know it got worse because there were some other not so nice comments about Angel and how she's this and that and all that other stuff. And I just was, I just hated in that moment that we weren't sticking to the facts, right? Like what well, are the facts? Whatever that may be, it is. We can still, two troops can happen at the same time. And yes, people call Angel terrible names, right? And Caitlin does some of the exact same things, some of them. And she doesn't get called the same thing. She gets called passionate. She gets called all of these things while Angel is being called ghetto and whatever else, right? Yes, this is, we're all aware of this. But at the same time, let's fight for the facts and not for just, what did you call it, Corey? Um, oh my goodness. When you talk about like a social media, it's like black or white. There's no, what did you yeah. call it? I forgot. It, yeah, it's black or white. There's no balance. Yeah, There's like no let's just to... stick to the facts, that, what, of what that is. Um, but I, like I said, I don't have any issues with Angel. I never have. I, I don't have any issues with her. It's more so I just wish she had a coach that would be like a Don Staley, who would be like, okay, Angel, this is how you handle this. This is how you handle the stardom. This is how you handle the haters. This is how you handle whatever. Not the enabler that is Kim Mulkey. Yeah. And I, I think, too, in a nutshell. one thing, I, if I may add to that, um, you know, I think what you said earlier about, you know, the, the name calling and these different things that maybe the common fan uh, or even media person is not aware of or is not privy to, you can't doubt that that's going on because it's, it's obviously going on. And, but, but at the same time, like, for instance, what Kim Mulkey said, to me, uh, and I'm talking about after, not after the Iowa game, but after the quote unquote fight involving Camila Cardoso, <laughs> what, what she made, her comment about, you know, I wish that she had went at, basically saying, I wish that she had went after Angel Reese. Like that doesn't help the cause no. as a white woman <laughs> who is trying to fight for her players for the right things, not for uh, condoning violence, that is yeah. not helpful either. Correct? No, it is not. But, That's but the Don's, point. I call it the enabler. Like, Yeah, exactly. What? And Don Staley, as a, a, a black coach in this, in this sport, handled it the correct way, the mature way, when one of her players did not. And that's the way – that's one of my issues with Kim Mulkey is, to me, she's an instigator, and maybe her players love her. But when I see stuff like that, it rubs me the wrong way, and, and taking everything with what you just said into account. Well, yeah. if you like, if if like with with Angel too, like after that championship game, she gets a lot of attention, and like, yeah, she got a lot of flack, but like, she also got a big social media following because people on social media like extremes. So like, yeah, she she benefited a lot from the from the persona that she put on during that yeah. game and after that game. So like, what what's she gonna do? Is she gonna back off her persona and lose all this money because she's you know she's like, oh, I didn't really mean it. Like, no, she's gonna double down and she's gonna make the money. She ain't had to go that and keep the following. Like, oh, I know she didn't, but like, <laughs> you understand? If, 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 if you were if you were doing some of that stuff on the court and then you started seeing endorsements come in and like 
deals for like your Instagram and stuff come in because of the persona, you would, you would probably double down on it too. Like a lot of people would double down on it. Like I said, doubling down is different from overdoing it. Yeah. Like yeah. you could still double down on your whole, you know, reason of doing it and all of you could that, whatever, but it's just the, even just the, I don't know if you guys saw it, but do you remember the interview with her and Flage after the championship? No, I didn't see I'd it. I'd have to go back and watch Oh it. my God. I was like, no way. <laughs> no, wait, nobody prepped them for this. Like it was, it just, she lost me there. Right. Like in the sense of somebody's got to be helping these girls out. Like somebody has got to be steering them in the right direction. Like this has, there's no way that you just let these people go on television like this. So, but I think, like I said, it's all about, you know, who you have and who, what their motive is. What is Kim Mulkey's motive at the end of the day? And that is a question <laughs> that I raise a lot of the times. And yep. It's just, to me, it's very interesting how she handles her um, different types of players on her team. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. A worthless tree cannot produce good fruit. A good tree cannot produce worthless fruit. I'll just <laughs> stay with that. Anyways, uh, in the chat here, so first of all, M. Bush, 823. Thank you for becoming a... Woo! Appreciate that. And uh, let's see here. I love um, a new member. Yeah, appreciate that. How about this comment from KG, KJ Do Too Much? Time for Taylor McCabe to go lock down Paige Beckers. So uh, if we uh, KJ that Do up, Too Much been drinking too much tequila. <laughs> <laughs> so it. it should be not <laughs> KJ be. Do Too Much, KJ Drink Too Much. <laughs> he he got to be. It's something. Because what? Uh, or he Eric, didn't watch the Iowa game. One of the other. Erica says, uh, you guys forgot something about Kim and Angel. They think their stuff doesn't stink. <laughs> that is very true. Attention. That's a fair statement. What happens? That's a, great way to, that's a great way to put it. You're pretty much saying their stuff don't stink and that they love the attention. Like, they feel like they can do no wrong. And at the end of the day. You know what that saying means, right, Corey? No. I never heard that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> their crap you never doesn't heard what? They think their crap does. Everything they do is perfect. That's yeah, You've never heard that? I don't think Their so. Crap doesn't I, don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever heard that before. That's what you get for living in Ames. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Kyle, you've been living in Illinois for the last four years, Kyle. <laughs> Pretty much. They're on their own <laughs> island over there. What what little town are you in? Or what town were you in over at Olivet? Bourbonois? Uh Bur Bur Bourbonnais slash Bradley area. Yeah. Isn't that so where it's about it's just outside Chicago suburbs. Isn't that where Owen Freeman was? Yeah. I I shot I shot around with Owen Freeman like two, three years ago because he had his Iowa stuff on. I had my Iowa stuff on. So. so, right. He was in our practice gym. Well, in your practice gym. In <laughs> Olivet. He was in Olivet's practice gym. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Showtime says, uh, wow, easy road to the championship. I, I detect some sarcasm there. Holy Got Cross, me. West Virginia, K State, Colorado winner, LSU, UCLA winner, USC, South Carolina. If Caitlin Clark and I will pull this off, she is the GOAT. No questions asked. She's already. What did I say player. earlier, Kashin? What did I say earlier? She's already the GOAT. But yeah, sure. She already, for she already else is. She could, she could take it to a new level if she makes it. I agree. She could take it to a, like a whole other level. Mm -hmm. Uh, Steve, anybody hearing uh, Gabby's get so Gabby getting some love on ESPN? Corey had to have teared <laughs> up. What does that mean? What does that mean? First of Steve, all, Steve took a shot at you, Corey. How was that a shot at me? How was that a shot? He, he's calling you a Gabby hater. Uh, Pretty much. <laughs> we're still on that narrative, I see. All right, yeah. whatever. <laughs> Uh, Lonnie, what happened with Sharon Goodman's game? We've talked about this before, Kashin, but Lonnie wants to know. Can can you give Lonnie an, an explanation as to why Sharon, her playing time is just totally taking a nosedive? The only thing I can guess, and it is a guess and an assumption, is that there's some mental things going on with her. 
she's been through a lot so she has been through a lot um losing a parent i can't imagine um you know she, she's been through a lot <laughs> just leave it at that no, it's been widely <laughs> documented yeah so um now t hawkeye uh, super chat appreciate this t hawkeye stocked up on cherry juice for this week's games How about I, gotta that? Get some. I keep forgetting about that i'm gonna put it on my list and uh, T Hawk, I has heard Pat McAfee is coming to Iowa City on Friday. Kyle, you heading over you know to the Pat McAfee show? If if he's if he's in town and I can go, I'll go. He is. What's going. he coming for? He's doing some show, isn't he? Doing a show? He's doing a show from Iowa City. I don't know if it's. I can't. He imagine. does college game day for uh, football on the road. For hey, well, show. it can't be about Iowa football. So what is it about? It'll probably be that for basket with the women's basketball. He just has his show with AJ Hawk and them. Have you watched he's the coming. Pat McAfee show? He's coming. I mean, with, during uh, football season, I didn't know he did basketball. Yeah, he's he does. He does it year round. He's huh? coming with R Roman Reigns from the WWE. Apparently, huh? uh, we'll be in town fr Friday, March twenty second. Uh, he's going to host his daily sports talk show from the University of Iowa Fieldhouse. Oh, so. Okay. Oh. Has the field the house had any upgrades lately? I'm just wondering. No, it's still. Or it's still old. the field house. Okay. It's still the field house. So. Yeah, uh, that show's very popular on the internet. I mean, it gets tons and tons of views, and he's got millions of subscribers. Corey, you should get on there. You'll increase your platform tremendously. <laughs> what should I get on? The Pat McAfee show. show. <laughs> you want me to book my book myself on that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, I think you need to go through Pat first. I don't think you have the power just to book yourself on that prestigious show, but well, Pat Pat doesn't have the power to book himself on my prestigious show. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got anything, you got anything else, bro? Uh yeah. Final thing I'll say is do you all have a final four in mind for the women's game? Uh I haven't filled well, out my This bracket. is the question that makes them all think. Out of everything I've asked, everybody just scratched their head immediately. Because <laughs> my head hurt just thinking about it. Yeah, I, I haven't filled out my bracket yet. Until I go down matchup by matchup, it's yeah. so hard for me to to say. I mean, obviously, South Carolina's got to be a, a favorite. Um, I think Texas's draw is pretty favorable, just glancing at it. I have watched very little Longhorn basketball, but that Texas Stanford matchup in the Elite Eight potentially is going to be quite the game. Um, probably the Elite game. Well, I don't know if you get if you get Iowa and uh, let's see what would it be Iowa and UCLA or LSU, UCLA or LSU or Louisville. Iowa and LSU are doing incredible numbers in the Elite Eight. Uh, I'll put it on my Twitter in a couple of days. Once I think about it, yeah. I have no you think uh, you think you think UCL or uh, USC uh, gets out of their region, Corey, with uh, versus UConn, Ohio State, and Virginia Tech? If you had to pick one of those four, I'm I'm not real high on Ohio State right now, just because they're not playing well. That's and the weakest one. What? I mean, I I think UConn's going to be hard to beat. I without picking matchup by matchup, I think I think UConn's probably my favorite in that section. And and Kitley's out, you said for Virginia Tech. Yeah, so, I don't know if she's still out, but she has been. Yeah, by the way, I did run a poll here. Ran a poll. Um and it's still going if you're on the live stream mm -hmm. on YouTube. Um, do you believe for some reason I can't put it up on the screen, but do you believe Iowa will make the final four? Sixty nine percent of people in the chat say yes. <laughs> Sixty-nine <laughs> percent, man. Sixty-nine percent. How many people? That's actually lower than what I thought it would be. Sixty-nine percent. One hundred and twenty people have voted. There's more people. Like is that people. is that on uh, is that on Twitter or where is that? No, it's it's here on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's you can do YouTube polls, and you can add more. To, you could do add multiple options, Corey. So if you wanted to, you could say who's getting out of that regional, and just put like the top four seeds. Yeah. I, what I want to do is I want to be able to add it to stream here, but I don't, I don't see an option to be able to do that. Yeah, I don't think you can. You can pin. Do you know how to pin comments to the top of the chat? Because you can pin that poll to the top. That way it doesn't get lost in the uh, shuffle. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll have to uh, look at that. I'm seeing it at the top of my screen. But anyways, um, 
All right. Uh, Drill MVP, thank you, sir. Yeah, a uh, final thing I'll say is everybody should leave a like. I mean, we've got yes, 395 please. people in here. We only got 127 likes. I mean. Why is my why is that thing going up again, Kyle? Yeah, can you do me can you do me a favor, Cord? And why? do do the, can you do this? No, I want to know. I well, why am I not special? Because you, okay, are you on an Apple? Are you on an Apple device? Okay, I want to know. I thought that was a Zoom thing. I thought we figured out that was a Zoom thing. Why is it doing that for Streamyard? If is I it, do this, you, boom, boom, boom. No, down. Does it give you the thunderstorm? No. Thunderstorm? Was there a thunderstorm? Yeah, there should have been a thunderstorm. What was, what was the, the other one? What fireworks the double thumbs up there's fireworks oh, like, and then was it that yeah was it that one? One, yeah oh, there we go balloons. hey why <laughs> why is that not i thought that was a zoom thing my goodness <laughs> yeah, we, did, we need to do that was that we an did, apple thing after after, after every uh after every tournament win you're gonna start the show by doing this and if they <laughs> lose in the tournament you're gonna start by doing the thunderstorm thumbs down and that can be the the thumbnail kashin are you not are you an apple user I'm sorry, what? Are you an Apple user? Um, my phone. I'm sorry. This man's this I'm sorry. This this man's comment just threw me for a whole loop. <laughs> <laughs> kind of what? The guy in the the guy on the screen? Oh, I how do you get that? That's some shit. Look, Pat's guys is an Iowa fan. Not sure. Yeah, he, one of the guys no, that no, is no, in no, his... no, no. In the chat, this here. Oh, no. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> How in the world does one think that I am negative towards my alma mater and I bleed black and gold? What? Huh? Wait, wait a minute. I'm not, I'm not understanding that. Like, what? Well, Corey, what do we say when people uh, comment in the chat? That well, they're well first of all, no, it may not be me because I don't know who Kashin with a C is. So I don't, that might be somebody else. I don't even know because I don't even know who I that mean, is. he doesn't, if he's trying to say no one, he spelled no and one wrong. No and then he one. spelled Kashin wrong. Right? Like, no And I ain't even been on here for a whole year, so I've only been on here for two months. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Too negative towards her alma mater. Now, that gotta be the most craziest thing I done heard today. No, actually, probably this whole year. Because what? Me, an Iowa Hawkeye fan we, leader? You're hilarious. <laughs> Kishin, can you, can, you do me, can you do me a favor? I want, you, I want you to wave goodbye to him as he unsubscribes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you later. I bet you won't find another one. <laughs> <laughs> replace, us. replace all of us. Bro, that's hilarious. Like, oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is hilarious. That's okay. That's Corey, Corey gets those kind of. Corey got those kind of chats like two months ago when he started growing facial hair. So, oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, I was bad on. Said no one see you. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I was battling some comments here. Uh, who was it? Um, yesterday, because we posted a segment on the channel, Kashin. Uh, I think I messaged you about this. You did. But, I was confused at first. I had to ask you what they was talking about. I was like, "What?" Yeah, because we posted um, posted a, a, a segment about uh, Gabby Marshall and uh, oh, the struggles. And uh, actually, I'll give you an opportunity to respond to one of these comments. So, Gary, oh, you, you made a comment during that segment where you said something about mm -hmm. how the that's uh, Gabby was part of the reason the post players went off in that game. Gabby's uh, defense was part of the reason the post players went off. And Gary responded to Gabby wasn't responsible for the post player. How do you Okay, well, let me that? break it down to you in a um, basketball terminology. So, see, you know, when a guard is guarding the ball – and she cannot get over the screen, that forces the post player defender to stick with, you know, said shooter a lot longer, which means the role is very open. Hence why I said that. Kind of are responsible, because if you can get over the screen fast enough, screws up everything else. However, Gabby Marshall had the play of the game, and I am so very happy for her, because Lord knows I was stressing. So... <laughs> I am very happy that she recovered, made that block. We win the championship. Yay, Gabby. <laughs> and uh, Erica with the super chat. No one. This isn't an airport. No need to announce your departure. Toodles. And can I just, I want to read something. I don't need you to respond to this, Kashin, but I want to read this comment from JD uh, on this video. Uh, he says, and I quote, I love how Corey and Cash 
trash talk about how Gabby is just an okay defender. Does Gab does Corey and Cash realize Gabby Marshall is the only player in Iowa women's basketball to have 1,000 points and over 200 steals? Not even Cash did that. Every game she gets assigned to the other team's best guard, and they rarely have big games because of her defense on them. How about you quit bashing her and actually praise her for being only women's basketball player to have over 1,000 points and 200 mm -hmm. steals? Might I just say to JD? Okay, let me be quiet. Yes, <laughs> something very, just very simple. All right. How many times, and I know Kishin's brought this up, not as I'm a ready. Gabby, but no one here is is uh, anti Gabby Marshall, right? No. But what people don't like is they don't like objectivity. And when we've made the comment that she's not that good of a defender, people don't like hearing that because that okay. doesn't that doesn't tickle their back, so to speak, or tickle their ears. How many times Gabby's been here? Five years. She's played what every year. How many times has she been a member of the all Big Ten defensive team? <laughs> I'm listening. So, I mean, we talk about steals. That's great that she's got 200 steals. But if she was this elite defender, she would have been on the all Big Ten defensive team. Hey, Corey, who was? Steph Curry led the NBA. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kyle. Was... One second. Who was? You were. And how many? Oh, okay. Hold on. How, were you? Was it your <laughs> senior year? Was it your? Two years, two years. Right? Two junior years. Okay. senior. Yeah. No. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. Yeah, you don't have to respond to that because your accolades, your accolades speak for themselves. So I wasn't. Um, and the crazy part is, Gabby bust her butt. That's yeah, not. We've that talked is, about her effort. She, she bust her butt on defense. That is probably the only reason why she is effective. We are specifically talking about the things that are against her when we say that. Like, she's not the quickest laterally. She is, she, her uh, vertical is not, uh, right? So at the end of the day, is she taking charges all the time? No, she's not. So at the end of the day, yeah, she is our best defender on the team. That doesn't make her elite. We're talking about elite, people. Like, yes, is Gabby a good defender? Yes, but you cannot say she's elite and she has not played or been even on the ballot for a Big Ten defensive team. That doesn't make sense. And I love Gabby. And I think she's fantastic at what she does. Facts are facts. And by the way, I think a falter is a better defender than Gabby. That's, but, no. I mean, she's come on They're late. Working with different mechanics here. We talked about effort. We've given Gabby Marshall so much praise for the effort she gives on defense. Um, but from an objective standpoint, from an honesty standpoint, if she's not shooting well, Caitlin Clark has 200 steals. She does. Right. So is she a great defender? Yeah. I mean, that don't mean nothing. That, I it mean, doesn't. it doesn't. Just say so. you love Gabby, and that's okay. Yeah. You can Dave, love Gabby. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. You want to you wanna read James's comment there, Corey? Um, James says, I've never seen any fan base defend anything as bad as the. Kirk Ferentz and Brian Ferentz debacle like Iowa fans did. You, you and Don, I'm staying were, out of that. <laughs> you, you and Don got yelled at for ten consecutive minutes about being critical <laughs> for saying that the guy that had the 129th, 131st, and 121st offense back to back to back should be fired. Yeah, when have I ever defended? Uh, is this comment directed at me that I've defended uh -oh. Brian Ferentz and Kirk Ferentz? Oh no, no, he's saying it. Look at look at uh look at the comment above. Some Iowa fans think if you aren't 100% gushing about everything Iowa, you aren't a fan. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. Well, but That's again, correct. like that, I've admitted that I'm a fan at heart, and and Kashin is an alum. But like, I'm not here to paint a pretty picture. And there's plenty of other platforms and sites and podcasts that you can go. Oh, don't even do what you want to hear. <laughs> basically, 100% of the time, that's not what I'm about. So, anyways. Uh, Talk, let's finish this thing up because we're almost we're like two and a half hours in here and we're not even talking about this, the uh, term anymore. We've got some comments. Doing, too. Doug says, uh, yeah, it's getting late on the East Coast. Doug says, why don't the men play four quarters? Great question. That'd be one thing that I'd like to see in the NIT. They did that a few years ago, Corey, in the NIT. They had it in quarters. And why didn't they stick with it? I have no idea, but I like quarters. It's more enjoyable as a viewer to know exactly when the timeouts are. So 
Could you imagine in the men's game if they actually allowed them to play four quarters and advance the ball? Take out the one and one, play women's rules. Like, ugh, I don't know why we need to stick. Why? Why do we need to stick with these? Or when you have the NBA, what? Why do we even need to stick with things like the one on one and the not advancing the ball? And yeah, you should be getting yourself prepared for the next level, which is playing like they do. Uh, Brian says, "I'd like to hear Kashin's take on women's women wearing makeup during games. Seems not mm-hmm. uncommon. The girl from Indiana comes to mind, especially." Interesting. I don't think we've ever had anybody. It's definitely ask more than it was in the past. Um, I think that um, there's a lot on women's looks in the game. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I, like I said, I speak facts. So at the end of the day, there are a lot when it comes to that. Um, I don't know how they do it, personally speaking. Like, how does your sweat come through your pores? Like, I don't, I don't understand how they do it. But if that makes you feel comfortable and confident. Mm-hmm. You feel good, you play good. You look good, you play good. So whatever. Do you. Did you wear makeup when you played at Iowa? Absolutely not. (laughs) Have you looked at those pictures? Uh (laughs) No. Half the time I was screaming and ones all the time. I hated that. It pissed me off every time. I'm like, y'all can't get another picture? Any other picture? No? Okay. (laughs) I'll start pulling those up if you want. (laughs) No, that's not... As I was making thumbnails for this show, Kashin, I I almost added you as a thumbnail, but the picture that I was going to add was you screaming. And I'm like, she is not going to like that if that's the thumbnail. You should have just added it. Have you never shown up to your show if you put that to your thumbnail? (laughs) Would not have showed up, okay? Just going to see if I have that. Do I have that picture still? I have it somewhere on this computer, I think, because I had it. I did make it into a thumbnail, and then I'm like, nah, she's not going to like that. So Yeah, no. after Corey, she said she wouldn't come to the show. Let's show it to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I think that's I probably mentioned this, this super chat already. Holly Rowe assigned Caitlin Clark beat reporter. Um, okay, Very weird, that. but I guess. Interesting. Yeah, I, it's, it's oh, kind of weird how much Caitlin Clark has kind of taken over. She's become almost bigger than the team itself at this point. Like, there's a fine line of where I like it to be for her star power. And I think we're starting to get to that point where she's becoming too big, if that makes sense. Like, her point total matters more than the team point total. So, does that mean then that Holly Rowe is like, um, what, like, like, like Brian Windhorse for LeBron or whatever? Like, you know, like he followed him through high school and then followed him all the way through the beginning of his NBA career and all that stuff. Like, will she stick with him or will she stick with her through uh, the start of the WNBA? Who, who are you talking to? I guess he was pointing that out to the ether anyway. and nobody knows the answer. So we all just became quiet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I'm just saying you know, like a lot of times, like with, uh, with like players that were stars in high school, like sometimes they'll assign because the beat reporter will then follow them through their career and they'll know all the backstory about everything and like who their high school coach was, college coach was. Maybe we'll get a Caitlin Clark documentary or some something. Yeah, we need it on Netflix. I bet we do a Netflix documentary. All those sports shows are doing those Netflix documentaries and they're really enjoyable. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Listen, you're not a big fan of Netflix or just. No, no, the hmm was more so because of like, I don't like the fact that she's becoming bigger than the sport, but it is what it is at this rate. I just I'm glad somebody else feels that way. I, I I just didn't want to be on the island, so I'm glad you feel me. No, I mean, I like, listen, she is, she has gained everything and earned everything that she is getting, right? I will not take anything, but it's kind of like, if it's contradicting, if we're growing the sport, Shouldn't we be talking about other stories? Correct. I know they're players <laughs> too. Part of it. So I'm just like, we don't heard everything about Caitlin Clark from damn near what color she paint her toenails to. Like, we don't heard everything we can possibly get about Caitlin Clark, which is great. She earned it. I love it for the sport. I love it for Iowa. <laughs> However, I feel like this is an opportunity for all of these other schools that we have not seen, that have not been in place, and get some spotlights on other people. So I'm saying facts. Fact. You speaking facts. I mean, there's that girl from Syracuse who's fifth in all time of scoring. The I mean, she's fan. a great story. Yeah, I got 
We hey, don't uh, even talk about her. <laughs> so you you answered the Kyle, you answered this question for is it Aviana in the chat? Yeah. What is the, the beat kind reporter? Of, you beat reporter somebody that follows them game to game on the ground. Assigned usually assigned to one player or one team. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, uh Brian, appreciate the super sticker. Thank you for that. Still don't know what the difference between super sticker and super thanks is, but appreciate the donation nonetheless. And um, anything else, Daryl MVP? Yeah, that. you should note that's his first ever super chat. So congratulations to him. <laughs> you oh, can see that. that underneath the super chat. It says what super chat they had. So like T Hawkins earlier had his 10th super chat and had the number 10 around it. I don't know what she's looking at, but I ain't got that screen. I don't yeah, see I was gonna say. I'm on <laughs> desktop. <laughs> I don't have that screen. More Can you all like Super Chats now? Yeah. Or is it just me? What kind of YouTube uh, the... account you got? Yeah, well, you, you can like some Super Chats. Not like the stickers or anything, but the people who actually type something, you can hit the like button on the actual Super Chat itself. You're on if you're on YouTube desktop. Well, at least for me, it works on desk. I, I'm on desktop right now, so I don't can't speak to mobile users. But I'm on desktop, and I don't see what she's talking about. So I need to talk to YouTube because I'm trying to figure out how I get to be that kind of status. <laughs> uh, I mean, I ain't Michael Jordan for all God's sakes. So I should be able to like people's super chats. That's true. I, I like it personally because you can see like a crowdsourcing of ideas, and based on who gets more super chat likes and stuff, you can see uh, the money. He just likes something, but I, I can't Julian like it. Why, why can't I see Lonnie's? Is that a super thanks on your end or a super sticker? No, that's just a one ninety nine donation. He didn't put anything to it. So is it a super oh, right, chat right. with a blank message? Yes. Okay. If it's just the line, it's just a blank message. All right. See, I'm on way too, YouTube way too much to know all this. I'm just terminally online <laughs> outside of sports, so I know all this. So this probably isn't good that I know all this. I mean, you all actually like are important people who do things with like like athletes and hosts and <laughs> Interviewers and stuff, but I'm just here explaining you how YouTube works. Yeah, did you know yeah, this guy over here? This guy over here is the NAI go drill. Don't go hey, there. Uh, yeah, I heard. <laughs> He's you, basically Lonnie. the Happy Gilmore of the NAIA, right? That's right. Left hand. Appreciate Lonnie. And then this is a good question. Somebody please uh, park park. Is that Kooky or <laughs> Park Kooky? Um, says for someone, please explain how the LSU coach. He's talking about Kim Mulkey. Does not get technical fouls for being on the court, Kashin. Can you explain this to someone? How was she able to make contact with an official during during the <laughs> that, that was crazy. Hey, Corey, you know, in my, this is my opinion. I'm not going to speak uh, for her. Do you know the Jordan rules? The yeah. Jordan rules. Yes, yeah. Michael Jordan used to have his own rule, quote unquote, rules because of how elite of a player he was. So we have the Mulkey rules. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. The Mulkey rules. No. All I know is I saw that it wasn't just making contact with an official. If I recall, didn't she push off on the official during that? She extend the forearm. <laughs> she extend the forearm. She the could official. have got suspended for fighting at this point. Oh, hey, if we're going to do it for Camille Cardoso, right? All right, uh, the adjudicator. Out of all the one seeds, which team would be the most fun to watch, and which one would be the most challenging for Iowa to play? Kishi? South Carolina. South Carolina. Well, I go team. USC. Well, USC not be the most, most challenging. No. It'd be most fun though because of Juju fun, versus Clark. Fun, yeah. yes. That's an easy question to answer, right? Yeah, yeah USC one. is the most fun, and South Carolina is the toughest. Yeah, Correct. and then Brandon says, Kashin, uh, what's your honest, brutal take on Iowa's culture recruiting versus LSU? It's obviously uh, it's it's obviously apparent in players we get from those schools and why they never will come to Iowa. I'm sorry, that was a lot. Hold on. So basically, he's asking about just the just the cultural difference between how Iowa goes about their business with recruiting and and with LSU. Um. I it, it's not it's it's who Lisa Bluter wants in her program um, yeah. versus Kim Mulkey. Um, Lisa Bluter does a lot of backgrounds 
she will talk to your janitor. She will talk to, you know, at your at your high school. She will talk to everybody just to see what kind of person you are. Um, and I think she does that specifically because of the type of fans Iowa has in general. Um, right. Like I said, you there you are always in the spotlight in Iowa. Always. Like <laughs> There is never a time where you will not be seen, whether you out in the pad mall, you out at the mall, doesn't matter where you at, everybody knows who you are. That is not said the same for many other programs around the country. Um, and so she is very particular about the type of people that she wants to recruit, where Kim Mulkey does not care about their character thereof. Now, I'm going to say this ahead of time. I don't think that anybody on her team has bad character. Like, I don't think, I think Flaugé is a great person. I think she, um, I think Angel Reese is a good person. I don't, that's not my thing. But they are a lot more boisterous. They are a lot more outgoing. They are a lot more, um, they come from backgrounds where you're able to talk, yo know, ish. Period. Well, Haley Van Lith, <laughs> Haley Van Lith is like that. Yeah, Haley right? Van Lith is like that. Like, that, she wants those kind of players that have an edge, that have that, you know, tough. Flamboyant. Role. Yeah, yeah, like nice, they, nice but they, they not afraid to get in the ring and come over you round, you know. Where Iowa, we mm-hmm. talk about, and that's for the men's team too. We talk about our toughness all the time. There's a reason you can't have one without the other sometimes. So, with that being said, that's the differences of the two. Uh, and well, then you uh, lucky and get one like me. I don't know. <laughs> Raheem says I'm from Atlanta, but I believe that this team can get there. Wanted to ask what it'll take for Iowa to get back to Atlanta, back to the Final Four, outside of just Caitlin Clark. It's a pretty broad question, but interesting. A lot. I mean, to become a full team, we're going to need some pieces. Um, I don't think we're going to be at the same scenario as, you know, we are now where we have Caitlin Clark and then the rest. Like, I don't think we'll do that, but – we're going to need key pieces to get there. I think the way that Bluter plays is, as she likes to say, beautiful basketball. So we're always going to have that in our back pocket. It's just the fact of creating a team cohesiveness that everyone is able to contribute. Because I don't think we're going to have another scenario where we have another Caitlin Clark. Like I said, there's only one. And is there any any personnel-wise, any person specifically, that given the draw, now that we have the actual draw on potential route to the final four that you think I mentioned Addison O'Grady earlier, just because some of the challenges, if Ioka Lee plays and they meet Kansas state, um, the challenges that uh, some of the other teams in that region bring at the five, is there any personnel like Taylor McCabe or someone who really needs to step up in your mind? Um, I think Taylor could, Taylor could be good for us early. I don't know about later. Um, if you guys remember, in the hot, the the Ohio State game at home, she looked extremely flustered because of the type of game and the everything that was behind it. It was just too much for her. So I do think in the early beginning she could be big for us, but I'm not sure as we get closer and down to the wire if she would be able to help us. Um, I think if I had to put one, Kate Martin. Okay. Kate. Kate. Kate Need she needed yeah she she needs to come to play. Let's not forget about Aaronette Von Vonley for Colorado, another really talented six three big that played mm-hmm. Iowa last year. So I think you know we're talking about post players, and maybe the obvious person that we're, we're both overlooking, Kashin, would be Iowa's starting five, and that is Hannah Stolke. Like if she she's got to play well. I'm not look, overlooking her. I, I I don't think – I think Hannah will play well. It's just, is she going to be able to stay on the floor? Well, if she doesn't stay on the floor, they're going to have problems against the likes of a Kansas State or I Colorado. Agree. And you're you're really thrusting Addison O'Grady or maybe even an A.J. Ettinger into a situation that, yeah. that you don't want to be in. I don't mind Addison O'Grady against Colorado, though. I don't. Because that post player is legitimately a block post player. She ain't doing nothing else outside of that. She is <laughs> – and so I won't. I don't feel horrible in that game if we have an Addison O'Grady. I will be a little nervous if we have an Addison O'Grady in an LSU because well, she is they are way too athletic for her. 
Vonley is averaging 14 a game. Oh, I, I'm I'm not doubting that, but I feel like she because that's her position, meaning they are matching. It's she's Vonley is not trying to spin moves. She's not doing anything quick. She's a very methodical post player. So with that being said, Addison could be able to get. I don't want to say the one up on her, but she will be able to use her length. She'll be able to stay between her and the basket. There'll be some things that she might be able to stay with them. LSU, they are way too athletic. She is going, she's going to get lost. So that's my only issue when I said I don't mind her against a, a Colorado. And uh, we talked about a little bit about Ioka Lee. She's, I mean, obviously they've played them three times over the last two years, lost to them twice. Um, one in Manhattan, one in Carver, beat them down on a neutral site in Florida. If they meet them in the NCAA tournament, uh, then that would be out in New York. So they'd get them in another uh, another different venue. And she's somebody that has dealt with some injuries this year, but um, someone who can definitely give Stolke in this Iowa. I mean, she, I think the thing with Lee, and we've talked about it with even uh, the Nebraska big, like, these bigs that have more girth. Is that the right word to use? Like, no, yeah, use girth. Go ahead. Girth, girth. <laughs> like these bigs with girth. Like to me, that's where, where Hannah struggles. And we saw Hannah struggle a little bit with, was it Kitley for Virginia tech earlier in the year? Yeah. But boy, She's a different player now than she was back then, but I get you. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be interested to see again, who makes it out. Assuming Iowa gets to that second weekend. I know it's an assumption because um, I'm sure all of these teams are tournament teams. What West Virginia, Princeton, either one of those teams is going to give Iowa some challenges. But um, I mean, every team, with the exception of maybe being the 13 seed in Portland, that I just don't know much about, Colorado, Drake, Kansas State, all provide some challenges for Iowa specifically. So, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask, what's your what's worries? Your worries? Of Sorry, is that me echoing or? Oh, go no. ahead. I don't. Yeah, I think you were echoing, but you're better now. I don't know what that was about, but what's your worries about Colorado? Like they've been on a massive slump recently. They're kind of just lipping in this tournament. I wouldn't be shocked if Drake beat them. And I think they will beat them. Uh, my nervousness is their post player. Like we talked about, that is our Achilles heel. And number one, I'm not sure who's guarding their point guard. That she is lightning fast. I get that. I get that. It's just, Rod. Yes. <laughs> and she's, she is lightning fast. Here's the other thing about Sherrod. And, and again, these two teams are very – Colorado is very similar to what they were a year ago when Iowa played them, yep. at least at the top. And Sherrod is a physical mm-hmm. guard. I mean, they, they'll push you around. That was not an easy – go back and watch that Sweet 16 game. It was not an easy Iowa. game. That was a difficult game. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, you know, again, you are right, though. Um, Colorado is on a downward slope. So it's just the fact that I, I've seen them on a high and I've seen them on a low. So I, we don't know what we're going to get. Right, right. I just don't know if they are – like they've been beaten down to so much of a level. They s- seem to me like a tier below the top four or five in the Pac-12. And I think Iowa would clearly be in that tier one in the Pac-12. So I think Iowa can just outshoot what Colorado is able to provide on the interior I think it would be a competitive game, but I think I would win by like 12 points or something like that. So I'm just I, – who, who is the biggest threat? Justin wants to know who's the biggest threat of all the teams we've talked about to prevent Iowa from getting to the Final Four. I mean, you, I'm guessing you're going to say LSU or um, USC, but is there – is that right? Uh, no, it would be LSU or UCLA. Okay, UCLA. Technically speaking. I'd go UCLA. They've proven they can beat number one caliber teams in the country throughout the season. And they're the Pac-12, I believe, is the best conference, and they've did really well in the Pac-12, and they competed in almost every game they've played without one or two exceptions. So yeah, We and just and match I, up I, better with them than LSU. Right. And, and LSU, that. by the way, they are, they've shown some bad games. Like that game against Auburn they He's played – they could trip up against a middle Tennessee or a Louisville. Yes, they could. And I, I apologize. I, I was mixing USC and UCLA up where they're at. Yeah, of course, right. USC is in the next quadrant now. Uh, Darrell MVP, I got to let you go. Thank you for being here as always. And we'll probably talk to you again this month. 
Oh yeah, Corey. I, I was hoping we'd get to three hours, but we just fell five minutes short. So <laughs> that's what I'm trying to avoid. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Good talking to you. Good talking to you too, as well. Bye. All right, uh, Kyle. Thank you for being here. Um, it's been fun. What is going on? <laughs> Why? Why? I don't understand. I'm not doing that. I'm not touching anything. All I did is I put two thumbs up. It's not even on camera because the camera is condensed. And then that happens. I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that because we can't. Don't fix it. It's great. No, don't, don't fix it. <laughs> Leave it. Leave no, it. I, Leave I, I want. It. I want something like that to happen when Coach Patterson's on. That's what I want. He'd be so, he'd be so confused. <laughs> uh, we need to get Coach Patterson on with Kashin sometime. That's yes, we, we do. do. Women's well, basketball interesting. analytics, right? That would be an interesting dynamic. Uh, the Hawkeyes play Holy Cross or UT Martin. The Holy, Holy Cross UT Martin first four game will take place. Is that over in Dayton as well, Kyle? I should know this. Yes, I think so. Yes. Well, okay. I think so. He's going to confirm that. But they'll play in the first four contest two days prior. So they'll play Thursday. Winner of that game, winner of that 16 seed game, plays Iowa as the one seed Saturday time to be announced. So, uh, uh, Kashin, appreciate you hanging out all evening. Uh, this went longer than I anticipated, that I and I thought. But this is kind of what some of these Hawkeye hangout shows are all about. So, um, appreciate everybody yeah, being yeah. here. Anything else, Machine, that I missed that you want to highlight? <sighs> no. Um, <laughs> we, we touched them all in the last three hours. Cross UT Martin game. Make sure you watch that. <laughs> um, but no, I'm excited to see yeah. Carver rocking on Saturday. Saturday. Um, yep. Do we have? We don't have a time yet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Don't have a time yet. We know the men will play Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central time against Kansas State in the NIT in Carver. So uh, we'll have post game coverage for that. We'll see if we can get we'll see, uh, late. We'll see what <laughs> see which a battle of which coach can get thrown out the game first. Yeah, what's who's Kansas State's coach? What's uh, I forget his name. I've seen him. I've seen him on Instagram several it's times. A black guy. I don't know his name though. Yeah. Okay. It's it's Last a short name. It's a short name. Uh, Tang, Jerome Tang. Tang, Jerome there Tang. we go. I was like, it's a right. short okay. name. Yeah. So over under on technical fouls in that game. My here, Here's my early guess. Iowa gets knocked in the first round. That's my early guess. I feel like that's just because you don't like Iowa men's basketball <laughs> right now. I, no, I, not that I, don't I didn't like feel Iowa like that came from an unbiased place, I, Corey. <laughs> I think you're being too critical, Corey. All right. <laughs> Anti Caitlin, anti everything. So it's like Gabby. Folks. It's like Gabby. Yeah, and anti Gabby. That's number one, right? Um, I'll be back with everybody. We'll be producing content um, throughout the week ahead, and then we've got uh, post game coverage throughout the week. Men's basketball, women's basketball. Not done yet. Postseason play is here. Have a great night, folks. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>